This is Naoki Yoshida. This is Fern Hall. And you are listening to Aetherite Radio. Aetherite Radio. Here we go. Her ad was a Mortal Kombat movie. Nice. What's, oh, nice. <laughs> That's like the first thing people hear when we go live. That's Our great. Her ad is the Mortal Our Kombat, Kombat movie. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I love the original. Yeah, as a same. Game. It was it was good fun. And plus, they got mm-hmm. uh, and I can't remember the guy's name. The guy that plays Scorpion. Like hell yeah. Um, yeah. He's like he's like any anytime there's a samurai movie he's in it mm-hmm. like yeah I can't Got wait this gravitas yeah anyway hello welcome to Eighth Rate Radio uh, I was debating if I wanted to to do the intro any differently and we just started off by talking about Mortal Kombat so there we go I think that qualifies as, as you're welcome oh we were live yeah, I yeah we were live we didn't know we were live <laughs> yeah no right right as as we came off of the intro yeah you just hear Zed Mortal Kombat. Well, welcome good. to welcome to our new Mortal Kombat podcast. Where <laughs> I should have said it correctly. Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah, really but now, now I'm getting now part. I'm getting now I'm sad because I've I've heard the new like theme song mm-hmm. that they like remix. It's like the yeah. old one, but it's like super dubby, and it's just like yeah. oh, it's awful. You didn't have to do it. Just bring back the Aww. original. You didn't it's okay. Have to touch that's, it. that's all you got to do. Listen, this is the future, and everything needs more. This is this stuff. is. This is the price we, we pay for nostalgia. I mean, look what happened to the Mortal Kombat theme. Uh, look what happened mm-hmm. to, to the, the new Space Jam, right? Like, yeah, you know. Anyway, this is the Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV totally podcast. Totally randomly, not related, but semi-related because Space Jam. <laughs> uh-huh. I was trying okay. to find okay. an orchestral version of that song the other day to, like, Reason. play play at an event uh, to see if anybody noticed, right? Just like uh-huh. really gently Space Jam in the background, orchestra like, version. Okay, that's right. Okay, all right. I was okay. I was actually envisioning this correctly as in yeah. the yeah. Space Jam theme, yeah. but orchestral. Okay. Welcome to the Space Jam. All right. Um, it it doesn't exist. I couldn't find one. Isn't that you weird? Know what that means someone has to do it. But... Yeah, somebody's got to get on that. Calling all musicians. Yeah. Alex uh, Husky. That's Come a on. little surprising. <laughs> right? Maybe I just I'm not good at searching, but I like you know, give it give it five or I ten could, minutes. You know, Nothing. even 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 like uh you know the, the, the string quartet people or like piano guys or something. Give mm-hmm. us give give us some space jam, right? Where's piano squall when we need him? Well wow, that's a throwback to like wow. early two thousands convention. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Well, well done. That well really done. did take me back in like one fell sweep to back yeah. in my day. There right. was a guy named Piano Squall, <laughs> and he oh, was no. at all the conventions playing well, in well, the and, and, and you know, don't don't forget uh, the the Spoony Bards, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, we got uh, back in Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Full it all comes back. Uh, so. Uh, Today is going to be our 5.5 hands-on initial impressions uh, without spoilers. So we are going to be as vague as possible while talking about anything with any kind of story. Uh, it's always a challenge, but... Why do we uh, do this know, to ourselves? We, we want to make know. sure that people have time to finish it. That's it's true. Deep, deep One of down. my favorite things, though, honestly, is when we're all sitting here going, You guys know that part with the thing? And all the rest of us are like, Oh my god, yes! <laughs> and then half of us get it wrong. That's yeah. true. My my the last few weeks, I think my favorite part of the show has been pre-show when when Aldi shows up before everybody mm-hmm. else, and we just talk about like, hey, did you, so did you see the episode of, of Falcon Winter Soldier <laughs> this week? That's not we, part of the show. We should just put it. It should be part of the show, but it, it would have be. to be spoiler tagged like real big. Oh, a yeah. new oh, segment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Segment on the show. I would have to excuse myself because inevitably, as of today and of every week, I still have not watched it by the time you two are talking about it. So like, I'm scheduled to watch it tonight. I don't know anything about it yet, so. Right. I watch it specifically with two friends, and one of them goes to bed at four at the latest. So if we don't start right when it starts, we're not going to watch it. <laughs> See, this, this, this pains me. Be, mm-hmm. Because apparently Rook is, is kind of keeping up to date, but she still hasn't seen Civil War. And so that just, that coming. hurts that hurts my soul. Just, <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up. the core of my being. Thank you, Aldino. I appreciate you as a human being, and uh, it, it means a lot <laughs> what you intended to do. Meanwhile, Fusion over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Look, I know I, I mean, need to do it. 
I still haven't. But just, what I have just... done is played a lot of the new patch in Final Fantasy XIV. Yes. Look, look at you trying to bring it back yeah. to, to the show. That's pretty good. That. I'm, I'm, um, I'm legitimately yeah. impressed. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Zed. Thank you. <laughs> um, so before we get into that, though, we do have uh, a couple little bits of news. Uh, first off, uh, Bloomberg in Japan was like, hey, some people are looking at Square. Like, they want to buy Square mm -hmm. Enix. Uh, and then immediately the next day, Square Enix is like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I don't know I... what that was all about. I loved this quick turnaround. Yeah. It was hilarious. There were like all these rumors. And this is something that we've actually seen a lot of recently as far as like gaming news goes. There yep. was some other thing that was happening on Twitter too, where it was like this totally not at all true thing that all of these gaming publications picked up on and started talking about. And like, we're seeing this happen more and more where a little tidbit like leaks somewhere and that people like aren't even checking and are just like hopping on the hype train, pro like probably for the views or the click. Right. And, like, the Square Enix thing, it was so fast that, like, one day, yeah, people are thinking about buying Square Enix, and Square just, like, busts open the door, like, uh, no. It's like, uh -uh. could you imagine, like, some of those, like, YouTubers, right? They wake up, they're like, oh, Square Enix is gonna be, and they start making their video, and then they see the news, they're like, damn it, <laughs> it wasn't quick enough. <laughs> Gotta be quicker than that. Gotta be quick. Uh, so that's, that's that. Uh, the other, uh way bigger well i mean that would have been big news if it was I, actually if somebody ever buys square enix though i want them to have soft in the name somewhere so it can just be square soft again <laughs> yeah, mm. rename it when you get it. well okay i'm sorry enix fans but it needs to be square or or i mean you know and they gotta is... whisper it square soft exactly or or you know the, different times you know we, what, what about like square hard <laughs> i don't know about that one you know, I wonder Tri why they didn't go with that one at first. Tri you know, triangle soft? Maybe go to a different <laughs> yeah. shape? No, hmm. definitely not. Rhombus <laughs> Enix? I don't... Anyway. I like that one, oddly. <laughs> <laughs> Rhombus is better than triangle. Okay, you heard it here Rhombus. first. Uh, is, it because, uh, is it because more sides? or? I, I just, it's a fun word. Okay. Rhombus. That's fair. I Rhombus. Guess. You know, it's like a squished square. Squish square. <laughs> kind of. I can safely say, <laughs> like the, yeah, sure, Zed. I can safely say that I had never thought about the fact that Square Enix is just shape thing. And now that we have said, like, what if they picked any other shape thing? In my mind, I'm like, nothing sounds right. Oh my God, but what if we'd grown up in a timeline where it was Rhombus Enix and like, yeah. D Dodecahedron like Enix, yeah. Or <laughs> I don't then even I know how many like, sides that is. Square Enix, that's too simple. Yeah, come on now. Oh, anyway. <laughs> uh, the other news. Octagon um, Enix. Octagon <laughs> Enix. Octagon Enix. It's actually the okay. name of the next Tony Four Man Raid series, Octagon Enix. Mm. Um, there was uh, a post over on the PlayStation blog. Um, between uh, Matt Hilton and uh, I should have pulled this up before I started talking about it. See, it's the this musical is... episode right now. There it is. It's happening. Oh. Look, look, you're capable. You're capable. Um, lead project <laughs> manager and it's uh, forever. Shoichi uh, Matsuzawa. Um, the, I mean, talking about the PS5 beta because that started with the patch. Um, we've talked about that already. It's you know. We we know the features of the PlayStation Five version of the game at this point, um, but uh, one thing in there uh, that's like oh, um, they were talking about the uh, new uh, high uh, resolution UI elements that were implemented in the patch, um, and then uh, Masazawa san goes on and says, "We are thinking of eventually upgrading in-game textures in phases and are starting initial preparations for that update." However, uh, we need to keep in mind that other platforms, including the PS4 version, are still in service. And since 14 is an MMO, we need to place some emphasis on being able to simultaneously render characters and their equipment while still ensuring that everything works smoothly. Uh, we do need to take care when planning major updates like this and start with testing and verifying that it all works well. Plus, assets that were created nearly 10 years ago didn't factor in the possibility of being displayed at the high resolutions available to us today, so we have to think about how to revise quite a massive amount of assets efficiently. Uh, so we're just... I, we're going to get HD assets for everything yeah. else, I guess, is is kind of what it sounds like, which is... That's the plan, the man. best way to do it, I think. Awesome. 
Yeah, it's, it's um, a lot of overhead, but it's the best way to do it, probably. Yeah, well, and, you know, and the. the... Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just gonna say it needs to happen. I mean, yeah. like, don't get me wrong. I love the style of fourteen. Like the aesthetic oh, yes. of fourteen is so mm-hmm. charming, and it really is one of those things where I mean, gosh, there are even games like old Bioware games, right? Where when I look at them now even if the graphics aren't incredible or like the resolutions the textures aren't incredible there's something about the artistic style that still really makes them feel timeless in a way Mm -hmm. and i feel like that with 14 in that like the style is so good that you know it doesn't really matter all that that's the thing right like overall it doesn't look bad Mm -hmm. but then like you zoom in on like the cloth covering raban's non-arm or like some of like the stuff on like xenos's armor and you're like anything literally this game anything with this game generally texture. looks good but that stuff looks like butt i see them <laughs> like, pixels. i see them pixels. <laughs> it's so there's pixelated. a lot of little butt there's a lot of yeah. little butt places in the game mm. if you really start <laughs> looking in and really like honing in on them yeah yeah just and stare yeah. at hien's butt just look at hien's butt that could That's be true. so much texture. smoother it yeah. could be so high def it could be so I mean, we need to, we need to smooth out hien's butt <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> to be fair, though, though, yeah, the outfit is also a nightmare if you get up close yes, on that. It is. So, like, yeah. oh yeah, they yeah, need yeah. to do they need to do some stuff, and I think it will only make the game look more gorgeous. Oh, you know, yeah. it's it Absolutely. needs it. It needs it. Mm-hmm. It's it's really interesting too, because I mean, this is something that uh, the idea of of keeping the graphics current, right? We've heard this before. I mean, back when we talked to Yoshida before Realm Reborn even came out, right. he's like, yeah, we're totally, like, we didn't make the same mistake with 11. Like, this is developed on PC first, then ported to console, so if we need to, like, upgrade stuff, we can. Obviously, since then, uh, the realization of, okay, maybe this is a little harder than we thought uh, has has cropped up, right? Um, but I think them doing this, it's, it's weird because, right, looking at what has happened with 11 over the years Mm -hmm. you've there's this trend of the community wanting features and square enix not acknowledging that or not implementing them so the community takes it upon themselves to do it we get all these different mods that show all these different things uh in the last few years we've had people doing up you know hd texture packs for 11 um but with 14 square is like okay we're gonna be more on top of this now so that this doesn't happen again and so now we're we're getting to that point where we're like, okay, we should probably make our own HD texture packs. Yeah. Um it's great to see though. I'm really curious, um, you know, if if they're gonna put these out in phases, like what what how do they group them up? You know? Like is it like mm-hmm. okay, so for, for patch six point two, uh Rogan and Armor is gonna look a little nicer <laughs> now. Like, how are they gonna I'll be really curious to see how they do, I would it. do I mean, it just by like uh, maybe level and type. Sure. Hmm. This yeah. time, armors uh, of the chest and legs variety levels one through fifty will be upgraded. Or or areas or uh, yeah, who by by expansion? I who knows? I'm I'm really yeah, but, curious. Uh, that falls under levels in a lot of cases too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm really curious with them talking about this now. Uh, I'm really curious if we should be expecting to hear something about this for Endwalker areas and Endwalker content. Because mm. if get to the could, area you know. and we'll reward you with a high texture pack, <laughs> high def texture pack. It'll be you really can pick either. You can pick either five strawberry cakes or a high resolution texture pack <laughs> for your quest reward. Strawberry I think cakes. I the Alligan don't exist. Piece. Three, three Alligan, whatever the hex, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> or a fondue yeah. set. Um, mm. I imagine they'll sort of group them up. I mean, yeah. either by category, you know, yes, like this type of gear or these landscapes or things like that, or by like you were saying, like level brackets, it would almost make the most sense to me to start from the beginning and work through because like some of the stuff that we've gotten more recently, I think has, you know, a bit more detail and they have actually, as things have kind of, you know, gone on, it seems as though, you know, Mm -hmm. given slightly more attention in zones and things like that, um, which is just kind of the case with how it goes with most MMOs, right? Like, mm-hmm. at some point, usually they have to go back and revisit those beginning zones or those sorts of things because there eventually is a dis- like discrepancy between what yeah. we have done now and what we did at the start. So I, it would make sense to me to start there and kind of go through, but I'm imagine, just happy so long as they start doing it. Imagine you have a, uh-huh. a glamour 
with like half new stuff and half old stuff. So like half of you is beautiful. <laughs> and then like, there are just pixels all over your face. <laughs> That'd you just, be you great. Just, you just bring, bring back smooth rock when, when we do this, right? Can we just, yeah. Yeah, right? There's a lot of, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'll be curious to see. I mean, cause obviously, um, throughout the years, right, as they've worked on expansions and stuff, they've probably had different workflows or different ways that they've, you know, prepared exactly. textures and stuff, Pot potentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would imagine, I, th I feel like the best way to do this, like, obviously, like, if you're, if you're talking about this now, they're, they're starting initial preparations for this already. Right. Um, so maybe we'll see this with, with the new stuff right away. But I think it would probably make the most sense to, to start with, write the oldest stuff, develop the process, Mm -hmm. that needs to be done and then go forward um they did talk yeah. about how with the ui stuff with this patch um a lot of it is that ai upscaling and then they would yeah. look at that and and you know touch it up where they need to so um it's uh it, whether or not i mean it's it's still probably going to be an enormous amount of work right but that definitely does make it easier if they're using ai upscaling so yeah it's just got you got to teach it how to do it right and you know there's really differing biomes and and like just think about and i'm not going to go into detail but there's parts of the new patch in a specific uh kind of pointy place you know that you're in and uh there's some textures there that look very gross um, yeah. and i'm thinking that that upscaling that via, via ai versus upscaling you know any other metal texture or things like that that's going to be a bit different I'm not sure, you know, I'm not, that's not yeah. my Organic area of expertise. Versus, uh, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I think of like nightmare AI upscale, yeah. my immediate thought is that texture in the void arc. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's just, it's so, I, I remember seeing this that's on PS3. Place. Yeah. Right. Cause we had heaven's word on PS3 and going in there on yeah. PS3, it was awful. <laughs> I'm just imagining hearing the heaven's word theme played by like one lonely out of tune bagpipe. That's the version that you saw. That's the textures that you saw. Pretty much. I mean, the good thing yeah. here is that at least the PS4 to PS5 is not nearly as massive of a gap right. as I think PS3 was coming along. Yeah. So, you know, people are still saying, and they've even acknowledged in this blog post, obviously we do still have to keep in mind that it has to run on things like the PS4. But thankfully the PS4 is not absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. So... I mm -hmm. think they can still do a lot with it. And it well, does actually make me kind of hopeful that, like, if they're starting to do this, maybe some of the other things that players have been wanting, like, you know, right. I don't know, various, like, more elaborate hairstyles or, uh, you know, textures for characters or different CC options or, you know, things that maybe, maybe right now just don't look great, <laughs> you know, with what we currently have, but that mm -hmm. maybe with some of these upgrades might be, like, more realizable i mean i don't know how it all works on you know behind the scenes but it is one of those things where i was actually really surprised to hear this but so happy because we need yep. it and it means mm -hmm. that they can only do you know more and it will only continue to look more beautiful as opposed to the sad bagpipes yeah. <laughs> well, and i think too i mean the the trick is you're gonna and, and i don't really know how hard it's gonna be because right now um you know with this new uh ui stuff that they just added obviously mm -hmm. it's not available on ps4 Right. Um, and I think that's what we, we would be looking at for these future upgrades too. It would be available mm -hmm. on PS5, it would be available on PC, but not PS4. So it's it's just getting that the system to work with that. Um, and if they've al they've already done, you know, in practice, right? You think they've 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 done yeah. that already? So um, can I request yeah. these rocks behind me? The moon is looking a little sad, and we're going there. I mean, we got to spruce <laughs> this place up. It's true. Moon rocks. Make make those 4K mm -hmm. moon rocks square. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the moon 4K is poo looking a little sad. It is. Yeah. Um, I think is, I I just randomly aside. I love the weird ass non realistic phrases that video games make us say. Mm -hmm. Like the moon is looking a little sad. <laughs> right. Or you pick up just... that porcupine. I'll kill this one. Yeah. Things like that. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of more. I know there's a lot more, yeah. but shoot, then we're getting the spoilers. Shoot so. the beaver. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, they're, they're going to be getting us some, some nice looking textures. I'll be really curious to see maybe with fan fest, we'll get some news about this. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. 
we're, maybe we're, I... we're, we're less than a month out so you just I would reminded hope. me that it's happening soon <laughs> i know i would hope we get news about it but a little bit of me also felt like the way that they were talking in that blog post we just have like absolutely no idea when they're going to even start right. implementing this, you know? Yeah. And I'm hoping that it's sooner rather than later, especially as we, yeah, like there's going to be all this attention put on this final expansion in the 10 year arc and like starting a new one in the future of the game. It would be perfect timing, but right. they 6. may 1. not. Welcome to the 4K era. <laughs> Everything else is just 720p upscaled. That's mm -hmm. it. But now, no, no, no. It's 6.1 arc, yeah. Let's go to Maricidia. It's 4K. It's beautiful. We'll see. The we'll see what happens. 6.0 ends in a giant moon laser just missing Eidolon, right? And everyone just gets free LASIK. And then next patch, 4K texture. Done. Mm -hmm. Free LASIK. Done. I want free LASIK. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know if that's how that works, but okay. Ah. I do see a uh, stargazer in the chat talking about load times being really yes. obvious in like city mm -hmm. aetherite and things like that. Oh, yeah. um, oh, we've got a dog barking outside. Oh, calm down, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> um, hold on. What I was going to say. The loads are just too fast for him. He's done. Yeah. He's done. Okay. <laughs> so, so, um, with, they've been doing some prep, it even seems like, to try and, you know, diminish some of that. Like, they were talking about here with our previous patches and the things they've been trying to do to make load times faster with PS5 stuff and, and all these different things that they're sort of doing behind the scenes, which I also can't help but wonder if that is, again, even, like, further prep for something like this, where they're going, okay, well, if we're going to have, you know, more graphical demands and things, we need to be working on making other parts of this more efficient. Mm -hmm. So... Fingers crossed that we just continue to see like upgrades and, you know, quality of life things that are maybe a little bit less obvious initially, but that actually do overall enhance the game experience. Yeah, definitely. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's going to take us into our non spoiler 5.5. We're going to try real hard. Mm -hmm. This is gonna it's gonna be difficult. Uh new weapons, the new craftable primal weapons. Uh, there we go. They're, they're pretty I made neat. so much money. I made so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I never throw anything away and I didn't like any of the Biako stuff before. <laughs> yeah. I Check. love like the Biako weapons have always been some of my favorites. It mm. seems like not many people enjoy them. I don't know what it is about them that I just particularly loved. And the Hades weapons, I think, are cool as well. Um, I, I especially like the bow and you know, some of the other ones that they have there. But I was not expecting them to look this good. Right. Like, I didn't even realize they had put them in the patch. And then somebody messaged me day of and said, oh, did you see that these are in there? And I went, hold up a minute. And I ran there to go look at it on the market <laughs> board. And I'm so happy with these because, honestly, it seems like, especially with the sets they've been doing recently... They've really been trying to make each weapon feel distinctive and unique. Right. And I love mm -hmm. it because like some of the previous X weapons, I mean, they're really pretty and they're cool, but a lot of them were just kind of like put colored sparkles on yeah. it. <laughs> it's like these ones actually feel as though when you get that upgrade, right? There's something really distinctive. Like even going to the Zervin with that fire and ice mm -hmm. and the way it kind of trails around that you. Is awesome. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. And now the like ink brush with Biako. And I know Fusion, you were saying that you're not super impressed with the Hades ones, but I actually thought that they were gorgeous. Like, <laughs> I love the sort of almost uh, runic circles, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, and mm -hmm. the way that they have a bit of that kind of um, almost like, not Cthulian, but it's that kind of like aquatic themed fantasy that we also have kind of seen with like Lunar Bahamut and like that seems to sort of embody various parts of, like Ancients and Asians and like the aesthetic and I thought it was so cool. Like, I was not expecting them to look as unique as they did. Right. So I was really interested. Plus, it, with them in, having, you know, yeah. taught summoners and stuff, it made sense for mm -hmm. me that they had something kind of in, like that. With that. In, in my defense, it's it's not that I don't like the Hades weapons, but we've seen that kind of animation before, where it's, you know, some kind of circle-y, runic -y, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. it looks cool. Don't get me wrong. But we've seen that before. With the Biako stuff, that's all new. Um 
so but yeah i mean definitely ever since like the the Mm zervan weapons like that patch i I feel like they've been really doing some cool stuff with these yeah it's hard to get super excited like the byaku i'm i'm with rook or well no i guess i'm with both of you but Mm -hmm. i thought the uh the byaku ones were cooler of of the two just because it is new Mm -hmm. it's something we haven't seen before but it's hard to get excited about it because i don't get i don't get a weapon yeah Mm. Just the Zervin one, yeah. I was really disappointed because that fire and ice thing is real cool. Yep. Imagine, imagine chakrams with the fire and ice things on them, trailing back and forth between you and the boss. That'd be badass as hell. But no, we don't get those. I'm just like, why? I really want that. I yeah. honestly like this is another thing that for me falls in the category of the Veer Hrothgar mm-hmm. head is kind of thing yeah um in that and like even when we've talked in the past about gunbreaker weapons and the fact that a lot of them have just reused various iterations of the exact same skins right and like this morning i had a friend who was talking to me and was like i'm trying to put together a glam for my dancer but i'm looking for something that's like this and i pulled up the dancer weapon list this is so funny Zed. this was like perfect timing i pulled it up and i was like that's really all there is yeah. and then i was surprised because like there's an omega one and I didn't realize that there was an Omega Dancer weapon, but when we get these new ones, they're not adding in. Yeah. There's a Shinryu one. Yeah. When they first started the bunch of them, there is a Shinryu one, and that is it. So I am hopeful that eventually we'll get more of them. Yeah, that doesn't make that any weird. damn sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, it just like <laughs> it's like they're like, yeah, we're gonna do this, and they're like, no, nah, we actually that 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 was too much work. Mm-hmm. Like I, me, I was so disappointed because the next ones to come out, I think were Sukiyomi, and I yep. really want yep. to have a set of fans from yeah. Sukiyomi as my dancer weapons. We don't even know if that's what it'll be, but it has to be right. It has to be, and it works too because part of your freaking rotation is a fan dance. Give me fans, Yoshi P. I mean, and, and this fans. update too, they want they added a new drop to Sukiyomi EX, so it's like you. You, you are very much yeah. capable of adding new things to these fights. Honestly, I feel like I feel like um, modeling that might might have been easier. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, don't I have know. no stake in this conversation because both books are <laughs> horrible looking. I'm sorry. <laughs> both of you them can are either, horrible. You either have the one with the pages yeah. or the one with the pages. Huh. Take your pick. Yeah, Zena- I... <sighs> I just wish that uh, they had taken this moment to add those in because yeah. it... Again, it just makes sense. It's like, well, if we're already creating all the other aesthetics for the other, th- and like this is being released, just release those other weapons for the classes. Because, like, honestly, it just doesn't make sense otherwise. There are so few special effect weapons, and like these are supposed to be things that are like goals for you to yeah. go and farm and get and like incentivize people. And it's like, if you're adding these jobs to the game, at the very least, at the very least, these special like collection weapons should have their own versions. Like why? Mm-hmm. Like why why to, not behind. to a point, I can understand them not going back and like doing all the like 2.0 primal weapons. Okay, like sure. All right, sure. But if you are releasing new versions of these weapons. That is the time to do it. And mm-hmm. it's... I don't know. I have faith that they'll get to it when they have the time. Right. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's just lagging behind and, you know, like 6-1 or something. We're like, oh, hey, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Here's a list of stuff we could do. Cut out two. Well, we can't do extra glamour weapons, but here's a dungeon that's pretty good. Okay. okay. All right. That's fine, Yoshi P. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I think I think I'm definitely on... on rook's line of thought with this too right just between like the the rothgar the viera stuff the weapons it's just it's it feels disappointedly lazy Mm. yeah and like that's not to say like i want to be really clear about it because like yeah obviously and like fusion i know you know this too right like when saying stuff like that it's not that i think that like the developers as a whole are lazy people who don't care right you know what i mean it's not that at all not even a little bit like maybe the better way i don't is the better way to put it might be half-assed like yeah it's not it's like a t- <laughs> i don't know no, if that's no. any better <laughs> no <Nope. laughs> i'm trying to figure out how to like how to explain it it just feels like it's incomplete maybe that's yeah. the best way to put yeah. it and yeah. like i love this game i love so much of what they're doing i honestly like i'm so passionate about a lot of other things but for a company that is otherwise usually very meticulous, but with their standards for like 
how they're going to release things or do things or do their storytelling these are like very weird holes that mm-hmm. feel super strange to me like and yeah. i don't believe that it's because they don't care and i don't believe that it's you know because they're a bad company or anything like that it's just like why didn't we just do this all in one thing like yeah or why didn't you wait until then you could do it because otherwise it does just like leave a weird taste for people in that experience where you're just kind mm-hmm. of sitting there going like uh okay. i'd love to be excited about this but i'm maining a class that you just featured heavily last expansion because it was brand new yeah and i don't have anything for it things. yeah <laughs> like, i mean i i honestly i would rather that they do release partial bundles so that all the people who can use them get to have that that little spark of a joy but mm-hmm. like again i'm 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 disappointed but not to the point where i'm like how could you it's, it's just yeah. kind of like you'll get to it when you can uh the more we learn about the stuff they're working on and the, the fact that our uh even the expansion 6.0 is coming out so soon in comparison to when it could have been it's like mm-hmm. I imagine that they're doing what they can. They're they're putting in the time into things that we need. HD texture, yeah. you know. I mean, I guess, but also, like, let me play devil's advocate. This is not something sure. I do all the time, but let mm-hmm. me play a little bit of devil's advocate here. But, like, also with the Fett and stuff, I mean, we got, like, a new Arizona tourist outfit. And, like, with, you know, like, all these other rewards and glamour and furnishing items, right? There's a design time cost that went into those to design Mm -hmm. them and then make them renderable Mm -hmm. on everything else. So for me, it's one of those things where it's like, yes, like, again, I'm not so angry about this that it's like the end of the world. Although Mm -hmm. my mounting aggravation over Vera and Hrothgar is a real thing that's very tangible for me. But it's like, it's one of those things where a part of me is like, I don't know why when this was being planned out, the scope of that didn't include just creating designs for two other weapons. Like right. when they already were rendering the special effects and they were already like, it's just, it's weird to me because it's not like they didn't have time to render new stuff because we got a whole bunch of new stuff. So like, I guess just in the planning stages, it's just strange to me that right in an era where yes we have these classes and new stuff is being released like fusion said they're not just planning to put that stuff in together, for the playable right? classes that are there together and like of course they'll probably do it down the road and they'll be great but you know like it, it's just it yeah it's just weird it's just yeah. odd on the I don't, flip side I, uh-huh. a lot of that stuff um like the the new arizona <laughs> tourist outfit yeah. i enjoy that uh, even even like the new mounts that came from the FET, things like that. Yeah, that was definitely uh, you know design time that could have gone into those weapons. But that those are rewards for content that everyone can do. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the case of uh, I'm I'm leaning more towards just the weapons. Any right? that's anyone just, that's can just... buy things from the market board. Uh, okay, that's true. I mean, right. anybody not, and, and, if, and, not if people and don't the mounts do... already existed in the game. They just had to model people sitting on them. Not if. People don't do the content at all because there's nothing worthwhile. Right. So if there's no items to get, then no one can craft it. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't yeah. be on the market mm-hmm. board if. There I, was I think no really, really the the thing. But for to me finish is... that idea, to uh-huh. finish yeah. that idea really quick, um, I'm I'm leaning more heavily on the the two weapons thing, the the Hrothgar and the Viera thing. I feel like that that's a step up from the two yeah. weapons thing. Sure, yes, sure. for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Go I ahead. think I think Anna. <laughs> On a, on a whole, right, overall, um, having something new come out, but then having a part of the player base that can't mm-hmm. use that, that's that's not a good thing. Um, I mm-hmm. mean, even even with, was it, was it this patch where there were more, like, gender-specific outfits? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, Arizona they, they, travel outfit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they've, they've been doing such a good job of, of not doing that. I and was then again, honestly very surprised. Mm-hmm. I tried yeah, to put on I, the jacket and was like, "What do you mean I can't put this on?" Screenix has had a really bad habit of doing like a like a like a you know one two steps forward, one step back thing with this expansion forward in terms back of and forward and making back. things available to everybody, and it's uh, yeah, it's it, it feels incomplete. Mm-hmm. I think now, is, is the way to put it. Yeah, a good thing to balance in this mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that thus far every single headpiece I've tried on from the new dungeon works That's on Vera. Hey, and 
one of them even it's like the one that has more of the amul jaw kind of like head tail mm -hmm. thing yeah the tail have. yeah yeah like that one just chops your ears off but you can still wear it and the other ones mm -hmm. your ears are on it uh you know like the one that has like the tusks and things mm -hmm. but do your, like, do your ears disappear or do they clip through they completely disappear in the That's one wacky. That has the full tail um, but honestly, at this point, the sheer relief that I felt clicking on that item right. and trying it on and then having it actually appear on my face was like so great and so visceral. Right. I didn't even care about the ears because I mean, sometimes people even like to mess around with glamours that don't have the ears or that like overwrite the ears, like mm -hmm. the uh, werewolf ears yeah. you know mm -hmm. where they kind of stick mm -hmm. up so you can do unique things or like create some sort of fictional yeah. and you've said that in the past too that yeah. that you wouldn't even care if it if it clipped through or cut off the ears as long as it could go on your head so they were like okay rook here you go it's like thank you square enix i love you sorry i said that you <laughs> half-assed the weapons it wasn't great phasing phrasing from me but <laughs> no it's it's just like yeah it's just weird maybe it's inconsistency is the way yeah. to better put it i think, I think, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's it. That's the word. It feels inconsistent. And I think that that creates a sense of confusion mm -hmm. that then yeah. does make people Confusion like X. <laughs> yes, Confusion X. Is it... <laughs> no, it just makes face. everybody... <laughs> it makes everybody have questions, you know, in yeah. a way that I think can be kind of frustrating. Or like you said, like nobody likes being left out of something right. when something new comes out. Um, and especially when those are like classes that are featured in the game and are in the game now. It, or like races you know it, it just leaves like a weird a weird feeling for people yeah. but i was super happy about the dungeon gear and yeah. i really hope that they just keep doing that so yeah that's good in my book yeah also the dungeon gear oh, yeah. put it on go through gear put it on i was like yeah this is a dancer outfit thanks you this is what <laughs> i wanted thank you as the... it's on my glamour now very Elizan ish guardian summoner looking at that gear. I'm like, nope, that ain't it. <laughs> nope, I can't. You just need to embrace yourself. Let your it's, beautiful it's, Elizan body be shown to the world. It's, it's nice because it's it's an aesthetic that we don't really have a lot of it's options true, though, for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's really nice when they when yeah. they do that. So uh, I mean, somebody just asked like, me. like the Arizona tourist gear. You know, we don't yes. we didn't really yeah. have anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me, um, because the, the back of the little butt drape has, like, five big, thick red braids on it, mm -hmm. right? They're like, which one is your tail? Because my uh, cat girl has red hair. Mm. So I was like, that's shame on you for that. Mm -hmm. Shame. I saw a picture on... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. If... <laughs> this delighted me. This mm -hmm. is how I knew that I was going to love the gear. I saw a picture on Twitter where somebody did a shot of it from behind, and they were like, your entire butt's just out. And I was like, sign me up for this mm. gear. How do I there you go. Like, But I would like to put a caveat in this, in that. Um, it's really actually, I think, aesthetically super well designed. Oh, yeah. I mean, the details and the things that, like, speak to the Amul Ja and like more of the desertous region and things like that are really really nicely done on the gear and while yes the first time that I ever played Final Fantasy 14 and I was going through the dungeons and I got like the Colosseum gear and I looked at it and I was like you made what <laughs> <laughs> this is like a metal bikini mm -hmm. sort of situation and I was very confused you know, eventually in your journey as an MMO player, you just want options, you know? Right. So, like, yeah, maybe you want more of that dancer look where you are just spinning around and next to nothing. Like, live your dream, live your fantasy. That's what MMOs are about. Mm -hmm. And it has been a while since we actually got a gear set that was kind of like that. And I think it's great, and it looks great, and the details are really nice on it. So it doesn't feel like, yeah, I don't know. It, it feels like really nice design and yeah. a nice option for people. And yeah. I like I'm, it. I'm... More yeah. than I thought it w I would. Like mm -hmm. when I was looking at it, I really like. I was thinking I really like the top. I hope that the bottom, like waist below part, is part of the bottom because I'm not sure I really like that. When I put it on, I was like, no, I was wrong. I'm good. This is my glamour now. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to to diable versions of these at, yeah. at yeah. some point. Um, I really like the uh, like the the mamie, like they're, it's like shorts. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot I of shorts. I, I think all of the the fighty physical classes end up with shorts. Yeah, so uh, I like I like even that on a lot. the ladies. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, while I'm on the topic of pants, um, going back to that Arizona tourist outfit, right? The mm -hmm. the 
what is it the peace lovers attire yeah from the lover, the yeah. fets uh i i thought that's a really cool piece the the jeans in particular they're like the the worn like bell bottoms like those are really yeah. nice i actually threw that on a, a few glamours um yeah. but uh yeah i i w- while we're there uh the fates uh, the fets uh, however oh, sure. however you want to pronounce this uh did you have a chance to to do any of these no i they... walked <laughs> i was like, i walked into the zone and a fet was happening and i was currently trying to see if i could buy some dye for my new glam for and walker that i was assembling and i did not do the fet and then in a moment of regret realized that the next one wouldn't be for several days so right yeah, so, you know, it's it's funny. I, I did, I did the, I I, I did a, 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 I don't know, four or five rounds or whatever. Um, oh. and then I did the the one, and it's like, okay, the next one's in like a couple of days. I was like, oh, that was that was it. Okay, um, but it was good because that last one, um, I ended up getting the mount and the uh, the attire coffer oh, from nice. just like from one of the fates. Right. So, uh, that was nice. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, I think it's fun because you get that. Uh, you basically you get like a box. You open it. You don't know what you're gonna get. Like that kind of like loot boxy thing, but you're not paying real money for it. Like that kind mm-hmm. of like that high that you get from that, right? Yeah. Um, so that's that's really fun. Um, and and you can get anything in these. It's like it's like retainers. When retainers would just be like, <laughs> hey, so like here's that like ugly duckling minion. I just found it yeah. for you. Here you go. It's like what? Okay. Like I I got an ugly duckling minion. I got um. What else did I get? I'm trying to, I can't remember. Um, but you also get like uh, the balloons from from the Ishgardian mm-hmm. Festival. Um, but yeah, it, it's fun. The the only downside is there's so many people doing this. Um, it can be really hard to like see the things you need to click on. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. So gotta use yeah. that numpad zero slash yeah. head. Num- numpad zero x on the keyboard to hide uh other people's names uh, is is yeah <laughs> damn near you gotta get your tool set ready for these it's yeah it's it can be really the first time i went in here i, I had no idea what to do what i was doing because it's like okay there's this one where you basically make a giant stuffed moogle right we saw the picture of this and then you have to carry it to this wagon for them to like deliver it okay well you make it so first you have to find the little sewing box mm-hmm. S- spoiler it's where everyone's standing <laughs> okay, then once you're able to click on that, you wait. And then it pops up a stuffed Moogle that you then click on to pick up. Of course, by this point, everybody else has also summoned a Moogle and is carrying the Moogle. So it's hard to see anything at all. Oh, my gosh. Um, and then they're all running to the wagon, and it's hard to see the wagon. So, yes, X and Numbhead Zero are your friends. I'm sitting here with my TKL keyboard. This is like, I remember Numbheads. Um, yeah. it's, it's doable. It's very doable. But, yeah, you absolutely need to be aware of of those tools um in mm-hmm. order to uh be the most efficient at these but um i thought they were i thought they were really fun um it's it's great that they're uh, you know obviously there's like that that cool down right between like the days of it but um you know every two hours anytime there's some kind of in-game activity that you you know you look at like the triple triad open tournaments the ocean fishing two hours seems to be the kind of schedule that they like to have that right. stuff on so i i thought it was it was good um I wish there was more that you could use the um, the fate tokens on, um, because right now it's just the the coffer, uh, the attire coffer, and the mount, and then like the the special dyes and, and materia okay. and stuff like the kind of the kind of usual stuff, right? Um, and it, it, the, the drop rate on them, like I I total like I'd actually gotten two mounts, and a and the one coffer just in that that one day. So wow. I I think that and it, it feels like they're not that rare. Mm-hmm. So yeah, either like the, either yeah, the drop yeah. rate needs to be adjusted or they just need to add some more, more leave them or something leave them so that I get one the one time I go to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean the nice thing is though that some of those dyes and things do sell pretty well, mm-hmm. and yeah. I mean you know, just from like a gill making standpoint, and especially as maybe some of the newness wears off, there's definitely going to be less people that want to go and like farm yep. whatever thing with Ishgardian restoration. And then more people that are going to be buying that stuff just from the market boards. It would be cool to see if they continue to update these sorts of vendors and things, though, if this does become more of like a pattern for content, like we're repairing various areas and then they have this Mm -hmm. same kind of thing. So hopefully, but Mm -hmm. on a different note about like what they did with the FET, 
I actually, when I went into that zone and there's that like remix of the yeah. like the the Ishgard the music. The music stuff. in the firmament has been like, they're all like, I don't want to say bangers, right? Because it's not like yeah, yeah. firmament, but like they're all so good. I love yeah. all that music. It was so cute. Like, I was so happy coming in because so much of the rest of the atmosphere of Heaven Sword very intentionally yeah. is like, it's gloomy dour. and it's yeah. dour. And, it's, and then you, know, you get into the firmament and you're like, party! I know, <laughs> yeah. but it was actually, oh there was something about it where even just from like a tiny little musical detail, right? It felt like, oh my gosh, they really are moving on from the war. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I loved. And like, I love that music. And even though it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious to see all of the ridiculous, brightly colored balloons strewn yes. all over, like Catholic <laughs> guilt, the experience, yeah. heaven's Sword, AKA Ishgard. Like, yes. But it's really fun, honestly. And uh, I think it's cute that they continue to do this because I don't think anybody anticipated they would take the restoration as far as they have and like really make it such yeah. a robust thing with the way that they've even used it, it to It is really surprising. Yeah. yeah. It was um, nice that they didn't just abandon it. Uh especially the the face part uh with the rebuilding. Just yeah. be like, "Okay, well, that's completely done." No, no, they reworked it and put it back in so that people who never got to experience that will still have some sort of approximation yeah, of that experience. Yeah. You know, on, and on that on that point too, um we were talking about the tokens. You also still get sky sky builder scripts from these two. So yeah. I yeah. I would expect that some of those dies are probably gonna drop for a couple weeks, right? So if you ever wanted them, now's the time Just to, buy to get a those. Now. Um yeah. But the uh because these uh fates are so much more regular than the um the restoration ones, uh you don't get as much XP. So I was That's right which which makes sense right thinking about it now right. but you know as soon as they announced this i was like oh my god i'm gonna get like all my crafters like finished up in a few of these fates mm -hmm. it's gonna be great not the case <laughs> but um they knew better it's, it's nice to, it's nice to just have something that you can go and do and and honestly like you you know if you get these these boxes you don't know what you're gonna get um mm -hmm. which is which is cool um talking about music um i'm gonna swing us back towards the dungeon Okay. As soon as I got in there the first time and I heard the remix of oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. that that particular area's music, I felt 1.0 nostalgic because we spent so much time in that area. I don't even know if that's music that played there in 1.0. I don't remember. But I was just like, oh, and it's only it's not even like the look of the place. It's just the mm -hmm. music was like, bam, 10 yeah. years ago, you're there. Yeah. That song is a banger. Talking about Absolutely. bangers in the game, yeah. like that one came on and I was recording and like half of me was just like, yeah. Like, it was just so good. I did oh it my with God. Trust, because I always do the main story quest dungeon with Trust the first time. And mm -hmm. I got to the end and I was like, man, that music was so good. Open the treasure chest. Oh, I got the Castrian roll. Okay. I nice. did too. I don't even have to I worry did that about it too. anymore. Yeah, I, yeah, I went in with Trust the first time and got yeah. the, the role. Yeah, I was like, oh, like, okay. Oh, I don't even have to worry about it. It's mine. Do you want to put that on the Arkeshian for me? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used it yet. I've been, I was like, I don't live in a house. I don't have a house in 14. So but I'm always like, yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. So every once in a while I'll go, I might just use this music just to play it in other people's houses. I, you know, I, 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 I looked at the uh, the market board and it was going for a decent amount. And then I looked at the market board the next day. I was like, I'll just use it. <laughs> like yeah. everything is know. dropping so much. Um, the the one thing I, I gave it a few days before I bought it, but I did buy that new housing glamour. Oh that, yeah, that yeah. came out. I did. I did it's cave and really get the the forged good. wall. It is really cool. It's, um, it's honestly so astounding. Like this is not hyperbole. There's so much amazing detail in all versions of that mm -hmm. housing skin. Wow, very very amazing job. Whoever worked on that, yeah. holy crap! <laughs> no, it's uh, super yeah. cool. I actually also just saw recently for the first time, like in person. The sort of like gardener house that they did, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not oh, the what is it, florist? The florist yeah, was, house. I think yeah, the yeah. name of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
and same deal, same deal. Mm -hmm. The details were fantastic. Like they're really stepping up what they're doing with the exteriors. Like I couldn't believe the amount of stuff that was just a part of that floor skin. And the same thing goes for this new one. Like, and especially with all those little unique areas and stuff that are kind yeah. of built out on it. It's amazing. It's like, there's like an um, anvil hiding in the back. Like it's, yes. it's really cool. The thing that I like too, and I, and I just, I noticed this by mistake when I was, um, you can, you know, redoing the front yard after putting this in, right? Um, you can kind of float things with it. Nice. So, um, in the front of the the forge house, there's like a you have like a little kind of workstation with like a for little forge and a chimney. If you have something there on the chimney, and then you switch over to that forge thing, it'll like pop it up. So I have like a floating deck in the front of my <laughs> house now. Like it's little, you know. I'm yeah. sure there's some other areas too that that work as well, but. Yeah, like that's I thought I'm like ooh, like I I'm you know I'm not like some crazy housing person. Like I, right. I'm really excited to see what people that know what they're doing yeah, <laughs> are, yeah. are going to be able to do once they get their hands on this. Yeah. Well, now it's just you know it's it's a Magitech Smithy because you have a floating deck, right? You can just skin it like Mag uh, Magitech. Yeah. Well, it's not like <laughs> a future deck. It's still just made of wood. It's okay, not see, like okay, you gotta you gotta make it out of you know pieces from the near raid. Well, I don't think that we have that much. I don't have. I don't know. I only have a small house. I only have twenty slots in the front yard. I don't have that much to work with. If I have but one, you don't that's a need deck. to put that much in the front yard anymore because there's so much detail on your housing right, skin. True. I mean, you'd I be know. surprised how quick those twenty slots go. On no, I wouldn't. They go so, <laughs> so fast. They go so fast. Um, I know some people were a little bit put off maybe that it is just from company workshop stuff, mm. but I was actually a little bit excited about that yeah. because, you know, it felt like, oh, good. Well, there is some purpose, well, you know, to I have mean, that's, this. That's yeah. what I mean, all of the other ones yeah, have been. Yeah, most of them are from that. Yeah, like, yeah. but it seems to it seems to catch people off guard that they right. are, or people mm. don't particularly like that they have to do stuff with company workshop, which is fair in the sense that, like, if you don't have a company house, you don't have people that have mm. that workshop. Sure, it's a little prohibitive, but it is a nice thing to just have and be able to do and or, you know, wear a little profit or something that does make having a free company house a boon because a lot of the yeah. crafting mm -hmm. tables and stuff even, you know, what they do is maybe not so much or like, you know, if you can get the ethereal wheel and get it up and do all the things you need for mm -hmm. like X-Pack release, sure, sometimes you get like the higher level ones and that can be really nice, but... This does feel like something that, again, they're just continuing to give more incentive for people to do. And especially as mm -hmm. these housing skins get really cool. Yeah. And I mean, if, if if there is any, you know, kind of prohibitive content in the game, it is housing, right? So it's if you have a house, you probably know enough to be able to make a little bit of money to be able to buy this thing, even if you don't have a yeah. free company that can make it. Exactly. Like it's, you know, it's that's not a big deal. You could deal. barter with your neighbors. Find the nearest free company house and say, "Yo, there you go. I want some of these. Yeah. I'll I'll buy well, them and, from and, you first. And, and even then, I mean, they they changed all that stuff because you used to be, you know, you needed a whole group of people to be able to craft right. that stuff, and now you can just go in and do it. Like, I can remember, you know, when I was in like a free company of of two, basically, right? I would go on to the duty finder, and be like, "Hey, uh, I'll I'll pay you like ten k. All I need to do, I just I just you can be like a level one naked weaver. I don't care. I just need to make these parts for my submarine. Just come and just sit in my basement." <laughs> You know, you we were just wow. talking about things that yeah. what we say about video games that yeah. is weird. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, totally I just need a not level weird. one I just need a level one naked culinarian to just sit in my basement so I yep. can make some marine parts. <laughs> your 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 knowledge way. of baking and pastries uh will be very helpful for me to make Safety my, not my submarines. <laughs> Just like standing outside of your house like a total creeper. Just like, yeah. hello, come into my home. You don't need clothes here. Just get your frying pan, go down to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I need is, an audience I, for something. I know, the thing is, I oh was that God. naked boy because I <laughs> did not ever have my crafters and gatherers up at all until Shadowbringers. So thank mm -hmm. you for making that easier. Yoshida son, love it. <laughs> um, but I was always the one that people were like, we just need somebody. And I was like, well, I am nude, but I guess I'll show up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just sit there like, am I healthy? <laughs> yeah, the I first time. Maybe, think... maybe if you're lucky, you can get an alchemist. They'll, they'll make some lotion for everybody. Mm. 
for, I knew for you were going to go there. Yeah. It passed through my brain, and I was like, I'm not yeah. going to say that. I was I was debating there it. it, you know, it, it. It was too easy, and uh, yeah. So yeah, the first time my free company asked me, like, "Hey, could you just come in here for a bit? Like, wh why? You just need to be here. We never put why? you through initiation. Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I've made, I have I've made another a sad face, like sad, uh, worried face, way too many times today. My skate is gonna slide right off the bottom of my chin. <laughs> not with that lotion. It's not zen. It's gonna be so hydrated. <laughs> You're right. And we haven't even gotten into like the content yet. Like honestly, there was content. Just wait. There was content. Somewhere. I'm trying to think if there was anything else extraneous. I mean, Joe in chat thing... says, "Man, I hate coming into this." <laughs> <laughs> So incredibly sorry, Joe. Big apologies here on uh. our end. <laughs> um, uh, thinking about housing stuff, though, before we move on to actual content and things, uh, the the picture windows that we were so excited about. Yes. Um, they're, oh. They are cool. And a lot yeah. of the other things that came out, a lot of the other things that came out are also really cool, actually. I love the circular dome and window. Like, for so long, I have wanted a circular detail that can be used in housing to create things like a circular window or frame behind a bed or something, you know? So that was really cool. They added a lot of neat stuff. Um, now, right now, we only have the two, though. So there's the Azim Step, which you can get from a housing vendor. And then there's mm -hmm. this, like moon landscape which actually is a drop from tsukuyomi x which i was so sad for right first thing i log in i'm like all right let's check these things out and there's only two of them mm -hmm. and i'm just like oh no amarat there will no be no amarat. there will be oh i have i have more. no doubt i have no doubt that there will be more but to get a moon one now uh, all right all right is That's this a personal attack yeah. <laughs> I, I I feel personally attacked. Yes, the moon one seems like a no brainer because of Endwalkers. I mean, that's it's just giving you a goal. Moon. Um, I it's do, nice here. You yeah, want I, this background? I was a little surprised. I was kind of hoping that it would be something that you could like at will change it, right? Or like yeah. you could collect kind of like you know you can collect the different painting things like yeah. maybe you would like if you had done those painting things you would now unlock also a landscape that could be displayed in this thing that i thought would be really cool but as it is i think it's also really neat to again offer just some kind of other incentive that you can get from other content and things that might be unique to those sort of fights or bosses or mm -hmm. so i wasn't too upset but it was surprising to me. Like, I was not expecting that they were going to put something in for Tsukiyomi X, you know? <laughs> right. Right. It's okay. Yeah. Just go solo it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's just I, weird. I mean, it, 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 it's such a weird thing. Like, we're going to have this really cool thing. And it's going to be uh, Asim Step and the Moon. Okay. Um, one's to be pretty and scenic. I'm talking about the moon. And one's for all of those uh, Ara... Uh, housing enthusiasts who make the inside of their house an outside or, like nomadic area. I or, think that's or perfect. For them. One yeah. one is for the people that just want this new type of furnishing, and we'll just go to the housing merchant, and <laughs> that's that's the only reason I have it. Ten k. Um, I feel like I was gonna the uh the, that Hingen window thing. Yeah, because Rook, Rook brought this up, so I bought one of those to to see like put it over this thing to see how it would look. Eh, it it covers up too much. It's, you know, I don't, I, maybe I wanted the the window part bigger. I don't know. I wasn't, I actually put it back up on the market board. I didn't actually, uh, I should have previewed it instead of buying it, but. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of other window or. Oh, you know, like, people will find a million other things to do yeah, with it, I'm like, sure. there's like yeah. windows and all kinds of stuff that you can make in the game. So, I mean, like, I, I think it's, it's probably fine, but yeah, it is, uh, it is really nice to preview those things ahead of time because yeah. And yeah. I'm so glad they put that function in. Because so many times, and in other MMOs where you don't have that function, I would spend exorbitant amounts of money on some housing thing, and then I'd walk, I'd walk into the house and put it in. I'm like, great, well, this is completely useless to me. <laughs> this does not work, and I guess I'll just tuck it away somewhere and hope that I have, someday I can use it. I have so much furniture on my retainers. <laughs> I, I, before I, I server transferred, storage. I had to buy like three more retainers just for housing things. Do you not have room I, in your storage? I went from a medium house to a small. Ah. So, so all that the other killed stuff, a lot of storage. Yeah. I mean, I have to agree with Fusion on this. As somebody who has 
who has done a lot of housing stuff recently, <laughs> the fact that a lot of a lot of different housing items don't stack for an inconceivable reason makes it very, very, very mm -hmm. difficult. Sometimes if you're doing like larger builds or you have a lot of stuff or you're a collector, right? Like again, it's one of those things where kind of like the glamour catalog, like not having just like a lookbook that stuff just unlocks in almost makes it so that even if your real passion is collecting furnishings or your real passion is collecting you know, uh, glamour looks, it kind of takes some of the fun out of it because you do eventually reach that point where it's like you were saying, it's like overflowing into stuff. I'm like moving stuff between my apartment into the free company mm -hmm. house, into the small house. I'm like trying well, to- And, it, and, it, and it, it's, it gets even worse for, for seasonal events with the new furnishings, right? Cause you're like, I need to buy several of these. Do you I, have a, I will not a use several of these. Or an FC. I have, I have a personal house. Okay. Uh, cause you know, FC has like a billion more tabs now. So I just throw that. Yeah. In. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what he's saying. He went from a medium personal to a small personal and that's like, yeah. So that, yeah. that, I don't know. I, uh, I haven't had a whole lot of issues with it. I did at one point have an issue sure. with it, but I went, do I need these five extra Riviera stools? No. Do I need this Oasis couch? I'm never going to use. No. Yeah, but if like you get of... rid of it, you have to buy it if you want it again. That's I know fine. it's real cheap. It's real, real cheap. And this plus, is the it's the first an time Oasis I've ever cow. heard you say that. I know, right? Yes, in fourteen, that's the first time I've ever heard you Throw say. I'll away. just rebuy it. Get rid of it. <laughs> well, this is something that I actually have heard from. Like, we got a, a housing commission for our free company mm -hmm. and things like that, right? And I was so surprised because a lot of the people who do seem to do housing, especially kind of, I guess, in a more professional, if you want to call it, capacity or things like mm -hmm. that, do tend to just absolutely sell any and all vendor items, like. They just, you know, even when they come in and they're looking at your your tabs or things, they'll be like, get rid of and sell, just get rid of every single thing that is just a housing vendor item. But Fusion, mm. I'm the same as you in that the type of person and player that I am, like, I like having my big hoard of furnishings, mm -hmm. everything that I've ever decided to spend money on. And then I like at any given time to be like, oh, what do I have? Oh, that couch. I'm going to put it in like, here. Like, at, at oh, one I point, there was one. the, um, I think it was, like, Little Ladies Day, where it was, like, the three-tier shelf thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bought, like, five of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the more I think the about it, the more I realize, um, via the number of houses I have and the fact that I have the two accounts, I can mm -hmm. just make alts on the other account, add them to the house, fill them up with furniture, kick them out, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> never mind, I withdraw. I have plenty of space. <laughs> through no. means, means. Yeah. I mean, it's, exactly it's fair zen you can make it work right like people yeah. do make it work and there are yeah. ways to make it work um it just is kind of it does end up being one of those things sometimes for certain people i think where you're like however yeah. it's you like, don't need like the... those five reviewer stools throw them out <laughs> no but but you know you get like the rising it's like okay here's some banners and some pillars and stuff it's like cool i'm mm. not sure what i'll use these for but i don't want to buy them off the mog station so i'm gonna buy 10 of each like right i do that as me. well yeah I have uh, I no no <laughs> overestimation here. I have twenty to thirty of uh, each of those ice walls and platforms. I bought a so, I bought a bunch of those too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that at, at Not one as point many I that, can but... make an ice dungeon for an RP event. It's gonna happen. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hello, I'm here. I own uh, the furnishings uh, that you get from killing things, and they're in my inventory because I haven't taken them out. I don't, I don't. I don't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm over here now. Like, oh, I should have bought like 30 ice walls. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I only bought like five. 30. Amateur. Amateur numbers. What is um, housing? What? <laughs> I just said, what is housing? I don't do that. Let's it's see. Fun. Is there anything else uh, from 5.5 that was purely just like additional I mean, items, cosmetic y, before we get into actual content? I mean, there's a little bit of job adjustments, but they don't really matter. At near, all. Raid, near raid stuff, near near equips. Oh sure. The bob, the hair. Mm. Yeah. The nine S hair. Yeah. Have you seen the pictures of the behind oh. shot? Oh on... yeah. <laughs> it's so awkward. Coconut. It's... I have it's not seen this. So awkward. Somebody took a bunch of pictures of it on, uh, I think, like, male Makote, male Aura, stuff like that. 
there's something with like the texture of the back of it where they almost didn't do like a trail of hair at the nape of the neck yeah. or something. There's no little fade or anything. Yeah, it's just like it's like at the very back of the skull, it just like suddenly it just ends. ends. It's so uncomfortable in a visceral way I never expected. But Weird. the two B hair is pretty cute. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dinos hair looks good on certain characters and things. I'm sure like there's probably ways you can also lessen it depending on your gear if like the yeah. back of it bothers you. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it looks real weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's on that some... awkward, like, Mannequin. Asian, uh, Asian elementary school bowl cut just stops. Oh, I see. Just ends. There you go. <laughs> That's Endwalker at the very end of the hair. Oh. Yep. Ow. No, it's the um, end of belts. It's the end of walking because yes. you, you don't have anything to keep your, your pants up anymore. And so yeah. you're just tripping. I like that theory too. The, uh, the aiming trip. body. Mm -hmm. The aiming body. I the uh, the preview. I was like, oh, that looks so good. It's the first like cape that Bard has ever gotten. Wow. Got the body. Put it on. I don't actually like this. It's the complete reverse of the almost top thing. Mm -hmm. um, really? the, a healer set. The healer set is open all the way up to here. That's so nuts. And I just pointed at the bottom of my armpit, by the way, for people who are listening. <laughs> One side is just open. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense for Yoko Taro, but for 14, I was like, wow, Yoshi P, okay. And then you, the hairpin, at least on ladies, is a very pretty flower. I am, I like that. I think I ended up hearing about the, the caster hairpin defending. from my first run. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's uh, the same thing. I guess on dudes, so it looks like a feather, maybe? It's Yeah, it's kind of pointy-ish, yeah. 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 And then the maiming and fending pieces, which do look like the original two dungeons that we run, are still quite pretty. So I don't have a problem with them. Hopefully the maiming people and fending people getting that gear aren't upset as well. I didn't see a lot of that when I when I did my... I only did the one run. So I didn't see a lot of uh, stuff that I could use, but... I, I like all the gear from this one, actually. I even like the yeah. one that has the cloak. I was surprised... I, I like I it, but it I'm not fun. like, oh yeah. I thought it was gonna be very, oh yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like. It all. I just, I just want to feel very Kool Aid Man about the new gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only thing uh, that I think, with them being so different, I mean, yeah, it is a little bit like we talked about the fact that there's not like a way to get that, mm -hmm. you know, aesthetic for whatever classes. Um, that's kind of a little bit of a downside, but at the same time, I was just kind of glad to see some things that were different than just the very, very similar to the first two raids kind of stuff that we got, which, like, is cool. I love the whole near aesthetic, but when I thought back on even, like, Ivalice, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The sheer amount of gear that I still am craving a diable version of from that, like, holy cow, some of it looked awful, but, yeah. but it was all really different. And some of it looked really, really, really cool and really iconic. And I really liked that. Uh, I mean, it was I liked as well that we got the near aesthetic, but it was kind of fun to see them actually, yeah, just branch out of that button up jacket dress. Kind right. of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With shorts that we got a lot of. Um, so I liked that a lot. Yeah, overall. And I'm sure we'll have more thoughts on the actual near raid here in a second, but yeah, I just I just feel so bad because none of the near aesthetic matches with with you know what I would like to have and you know I look at the caster gear and I'm like ah uh, okay well tall well, Allison man you don't have your side out you can I have mean your side out. I could yeah it's true it's just not in the way that you know I dress my character it's just you know that's whole ish guardian style and it's it's close right it's kind of this this severe i would like to say fashion this this kind of straight line this you know and that's cool but i'm glad that people like it and i'm glad that it was so different between each set too because you have more to mix and match now um not yeah. not quite because you can't really you know hop over the divisions but at least now you're like as a caster i do have something that's all the way up to my armpit or something like that that's cool as total totally like almost not related i meant to mention this earlier um charles who's mm -hmm. been playing red mage yeah. for this whole this whole raid here came in to raid on summon of the other night mm -hmm. and our new healer was like wait what and the rest of us did, didn't even like no. notice right he's like 
what do you mean you're a summoner? You're a red mage. And the rest of us were like, no, he's not. Uh -uh. <laughs> you wrong. <laughs> but I thought of this because I'm like, you have to get that caster outfit and just go in, you side all out and just confuse him some more. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I have plans. Yes. Really prefer the character type that you've built yeah. up as a mask this whole expansion. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, why aren't you playing red mage anymore? Charles just goes, I hate it. <laughs> oh, no. well, we were tell us we were how you middle, really feel we were in the middle of the poll and i pushed to talk even on this show and i'm like i'm in my opener and i'm a summoner i'm not gonna all right i got a second i hate it and then i let go and i kept doing my opener i was like i'll clarify later and i did you just really hate it i hate <laughs> it's it it's not as fun all right do we feel ready? Do we feel ready so. for the content, the content discussion? Oh, the all no right. Content discussion. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go. Let's I go. didn't like near. No. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking to everyone. I know. Show's over. Yep. Absolutely a surprise. No one saw this coming. I did. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't particularly care for the story. Um. I'm not going to say what the story is, obviously, right? Because it's not yeah. spoiler cast yet. Um, the in between quests, I felt made me a little bit more excited about what, to, what was to come, and then what came was like, oh, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense, maybe. <laughs> but the actual like fights themselves, I really enjoyed. Yeah, the, the fights I, I am... think had some cool elements to it. Um, and and you know. Going back like a couple patches, right? I'm really happy about them including elements of verticality, mm -hmm. um, both in the dungeon and in the raid. Um, it's just it's nice to see something different, you know. Um, so I, I, I again, right? And we talked about this a little bit last week, where you know we're all like, okay, the music is probably going to be great, the mechanics mm -hmm. will probably be fun, but the story is probably going to be like the worst thing ever, and that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> I not ever. I, no, it's not ever. Really ever but, but i will say this uh zen i agree with you 100 percent on your assessment right and again like we won't get into the details of the story and stuff like that mm. um but when we do i'm actually really excited about it because not the not the content of the story but about tearing it apart right because <laughs> i we're gonna be savage i was kind of lukewarm <sighs> like here's the thing as we've talked about in the cast, and as I feel like I have, you know, said, I actually really, really love Yoko Taro as a creator. I actually really do think that there are valuable things and have been valuable things that are a takeaway from this collaboration, particularly in mechanics. Mm -hmm. I think that we got some really fun mechanical stuff. And this, like, set of fights, I loved. The music was incredible, but the fights themselves as well had some really cool mechanics, some neat subversions. I wish they had done a little bit more with uh, one of the things that I actually really love about the like no texture kind of shadow mm -hmm. and light scape was that if you angle your camera on some of those stairwells, they actually blend so that you yeah. can't see they anything. They disappear, yeah. And I would have loved it if one of the fights had some kind of visual trick where you actually did have to like angle your camera different right. ways to see like where something was or wasn't that would have been incredible but that tiny complaint aside i loved the variety of fights even the little hacking sequence was so unique the color play and interplay of black and white i thought was fantastic in uh the one fight the transition in the last fight the transparent floors and the way that it played with the dimension of space where like you had to mm -hmm. look below to see i love that it. was cool I so really cool. liked that part yeah. of it. I think for me, yeah. um, and and I'm the only one that I think I've I've seen this opinion from, with that 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 hacking bit, mm -hmm. that was just as bad as that weird intermission in E12 for me. It just <laughs> it really just took me out of everything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could I could see that. I could see that. Uh, you know, it's it's just so near right it's just so near right and, well right you know, and that's and that's the thing right it, it is a yeah. very near thing and yeah. so i get that um you know and like i said last week you know i've i've tried to play automata several times and mm -hmm. i just can't get into it but at least the the settings of the last two have made sense for me right right 
with this one, I have no idea what this place is. I don't know why I should care. Coming out of it, I don't know with these... Th there are weekly quests that you can do with this. I don't know why I should continue to care. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't look like there's really any notable reward from doing this weekly stuff. Um, m maybe there is. We just don't know what it is. But, I mean, to be like, hey, here's this new weekly quest, but we're not going to tell you if you get anything cool out of it or if it's worth your time. That's kind of a misstep, I think, but... I, um, yeah, the story is, like, a whole nother experience for sure. me in that, and again, this is, like, a no spoiler, so, I'm, you know. I'm it's hard, to... right? Yeah. The thing is, is that by the time I finished these raids, and because I think I'm going through Kalusia on another alt character, mm. the themes of the zone actually work super well with near mm -hmm. which and the way that they did this which i was so surprised by i mean even mount golg is an ascension yeah. right and like the visuals that you get at the top are so similar to what the culmination of this raid set was and the idea that like that last arena the last fight is kind of a eulogy for a world long dead is like gorgeous and the the parallels that could have been done yeah. with like with the first having almost met its end and like what the idea of this perfection and like it's oh it's so I think what really frustrated me by the end of this is that we finally made it to the last fight and to me I felt an incredible sense of like holy cow this is a conclusion we could have had and yet nothing mm -hmm. in the story supports right. this nothing yeah. in the actual tale supports it like nothing with how the dwarves were used supports mm -hmm. this nothing like it is such a huge misstep and like fusion you talking about the the hacking sequence right if we had even taken a fraction of the time that they spent making us run up and down linear corridors to do nothing <laughs> of note that meant nothing in the actual culmination of this to introduce some kind of mini duty where you were introduced to what hacking was yeah, you like had, cool. and then to see that played within a fight because you're right as somebody who has no context with near to be taken into that interlude it probably makes no sense for yeah. me i was like this is really cool because one of the biggest subversions of near automata is that the second playthrough that you do is on a character who is a hacker so you think that you are playing through the whole game and it's the exact same game but when you get to fights suddenly the way you engage with them is hacking sequences and the whole game shifts and it's like this incredible perception shift of space and dimension and what you thought you knew about the world you played in previously as a different mm -hmm. character you don't get that from this yeah and i just yeah. like i it makes me angry it makes me angry because all of the ingredients for this to have truly been something that I think with that exact same final fight would have had me in tears, right. would have had me in shambles, would have made me care so much about these characters in a way that we felt with like um, a little bit. Mm. None of it is in this quest. And I hated the culmination of the story. I thought it was completely useless and idiotic. <laughs> and I'm going to be real. I have a lot of really strong feelings about it. And I think they are made stronger by what I could have seen that would have been mm -hmm. really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah. not there. And, 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 from you know, a couple other near fans too. Yeah. Pick, picking up on that. Like I hadn't thought about those and that's cool, but I think, you know, it's, it's a near collaboration in final fantasy 14. So I think it's really important that whatever story you want to tell, you need to tell it through devices that final fantasy 14 players are familiar with. Um, you know, and I even went on Twitter and I was like, look, if there's, are there any like hardcore near people out there that like play this? And it made sense. Nobody mm -hmm. really was, they're all just kind of like, I don't know. And I mean, you know, last week again too, I mean, talking about how that one boss, right. Is, is in like one of the promo screenshots for replicant that's coming up. Um, and I just saw another one, another one of the bosses is also in replicant. And it's like that just, it, it makes it feel even worse from like the perspective of like this is like just one big marketing collaboration right like granted it kind of was from the beginning right but now with replicant on our doorstep with this mm -hmm. raid coming up it, it just feels even more so and that's even more frustrating because it just 
was not an enjoyable story. I, it has a lot of good, you know, mechanics were, were yeah. great. Music was fantastic. Everything else just the best thing, I think. And this is this is going to get harsh and I apologize. Mm -hmm. The best thing to come out of this raid series is that the next one will be original and not a collaboration. <laughs> I, th I thought that's what you were going to say. Like, I I know of the story of Nier. I haven't really played very many of them. It doesn't make... It, this in 14 doesn't make sense to me. But what if you do the weekly quest, it sets a flag, you go next week to do Nier, and it's different. That the 24-man changes in some way. Because one of the biggest part of all of them yeah. are the multiple endings, right? But people are expecting things like that. And if you don't, like, give us that, we're going to feel like it isn't well, a true crossover. Remember, right? too, the last time that we expected things and didn't yeah, get it. Exactly. That was, e that was E12. Yeah. Well, so... I mean, I'll do know, know, I do think that's actually... Now my hopes are cool. Up. Yeah, I know, and I didn't <laughs> want to say it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be crushed if not, because that would actually be incredible. If, like, you go in next time and there is a different cutscene mm -hmm. that plays or something because you have that flag. I'm going to do it because you said that. And now I'm uh, going to do that. Don't do I'm that. Gonna do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the weekly quest. I'm running it anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, I that's hope. what we are expecting, right? That's what, that's, when you have a name like Yoko Taro, that's what you expect. You expect it to, you know, make sense in 14, but be on its own this, and I don't want to say transcendent, but this, uh, bigger than a normal video game, right? You look at Kojima's works, you're you're like, Death Stranding is going to have something amazing in it. You look at Yoko Taro, you expect the same thing. And it just didn't, it didn't make it there. I mean, battle-wise, the battle team, holy crap. Like, mm -hmm. that's going to be everywhere. We're going to have to deal with those mechanics and raids, and I'm so ready. That is awesome. Uh, I like all of them, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't make it, and I'm just hoping that we're just on ending A right now <laughs> that would be really be... neat if so I, I i mean i hope so I, and talking about things that i think did come from this collaboration like you said that are good mm -hmm. i do think that the battle team got some fantastic ideas from this right. and i really really did enjoy seeing how i mean and and i've referenced the monster hunter world collaboration as well yeah. too right but like different styles of creating mechanical content can inspire different things and i think with this particular raid set We've seen so much interplay with, which is very much Yoko Taro-esque, like subversion of expectations. Even in the one fight where there's the knockback, everybody has been trained in 14 to move behind to like block yeah. the attack line. And everybody got swept off in that fight. Yep. Dead people for days. Yep. So like the idea, the idea of like, okay, well, I need to reverse what I expect from this. Or with the the light stuff as well. I really like that black and white interplay because when you start adding in those interesting layers of like, there is a black meteor and a white meteor. What is the current space? What did we leave up? What will protect me from X, Y, or Z? It creates dimension within a fight that is unique and interesting and really fun. And I really did like that. Um, and we have a bunch of other things, even like some of the ad phase. I even yeah. think that putting in more interesting kind of interludes like the hacking, could be done really well if again there's something that's unique about it or it's tied in and it doesn't feel like just a dumb thing that you have to do in future fights you know i i like that because it does again break up what we're used to mm -hmm. in a fight um and then i mean even introducing like that final boss which has a lot of that cool dimension of space uh where you know you are like looking down or up or where things fall is different because of an optical illusion of this or that and right. like you know, following the shadows or not, the the light pattern rings, which reminded me of the innovation with Suzaku and the DDR game, you know, like, mm -hmm. I I enjoy all of that. And I, I really think that's a powerful takeaway from this raid set. But again, do I think that they really did a good job of bridging that gap between 14 and near so that the story backed it and created a similarly compelling experience? I really don't. I, I really don't. So here's an interesting sentiment from chat. Gold Star says uh, they're happy that the near raid existed because it got them into fourteen. Huh? Yeah, hey, that's true too. But they they do agree that it's very disappointing content. <laughs> right? Yeah. One, you know, one thing uh, we we haven't talked about this yet. Uh, 
specifically about the near raid um there's been talk about uh flashing lights yeah um in this and so i i went into the raid I, you know i think i can see where it was i don't know if it was maybe as strong as as i felt people were building it up mm -hmm. to be but i mean you know nevertheless there are people that are having issues yeah. with this and i'm really surprised i haven't seen any statement from square about this yet mm -hmm. um i've seen somebody in the community working on some type of mod to like help calm that right. down but i haven't seen anything from square yet about this i'm i i've never had problems with uh epileptic things but i did go in at you know six in the morning with terrible eye strain uh and have to look at all these bright white things and uh mm -hmm. it was pretty bad it definitely had me doing this a oh, lot uh, just like, <laughs> yeah. uh so maybe something to talk about mm-hmm Especially in the wake of Cyberpunk, which had yes. such a huge oh, yeah. that's it does seem like something that Square Enix should be consciously addressing. Now, again, like we don't truly know the full scale or scope of some of these, you know, discussions or reports yeah. or you know, it's one of those things where I mean, hopefully they are internally looking at it and if it is of real concern, it is something that they'll address. I'm guessing it it's on the Red Girl fight. Is that the one in particular? I think I I, 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 so. I haven't seen anyone mention a fight in particular, but after doing the raid, that would be my, my guess, mm -hmm. yeah. Because she has some flicker effects and screen yeah. effects and things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's something that game developers have to be conscious of. And I, I caution the community too, because sometimes when it comes to things like these reports, right, you, or accessibility as a whole in games, right. we see a lot of these discussions that are like, grouping into this idea of snowflake gaming or like oh people who just can't you know, like deal with it and it's like no 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 no, no. there are no. actual like medical concerns and or um even physical limitations with various things be it color blindness or anything else right where game companies have to be aware working in a medium that can cause or trigger these things um how and what is you know important to pay attention to and like there are very discernible particularly as far as i know with epilepsy spectrums flickering rates light like so there are ways that they could easily talk to you know organizations or people before releasing something to know this it's just raising awareness for this even being something that needs to be discussed in right. games or needs to have settings for people who might you know uh have certain accommodations so uh yeah i hope they say something about it it's 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 a, you know it's it's a little surprising honestly that something like this made it in because Square has been you know in terms of accessibility for an MMO right uh, they've I think they've really done it. I mean they've they've done multiple colorblind modes they did the uh, the audio thing like they you know they've been pretty good with with doing stuff for for accessibility and then you know in in a year where a handful of games have had this issue right uh cyberpunk mm -hmm. um there was that bug in Balan that when that came out yeah um as well and and now this it's it's it is surprising to see that from them so, um i say this like i said i i don't have any seizure issues myself i have done zero research into it to see what it is that does that to people um but it seems to me again completely uneducated uh opinion mm -hmm. here that that particular flash is actually very gentle, like at least light wise, maybe not frequency wise mm -hmm. in comparison to a lot of the other stuff that's going on. Cause it's like very stark black, very stark white, but that's a lot of gray with a couple of flashing lines. As far as I could tell again, yeah. not, not sensitive, uneducated opinion. Yeah. So well, maybe, it's like I said, it, the, try uh, and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and could could work on it. And maybe it just wasn't enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I like I said, I, the effect wasn't as strong as I, I felt like people were talking about. But again, I'm not sensitive to that stuff. There are people that are. So. Yeah, and and those triggers or those things that can set them off a lot of times aren't. Yeah, like there's very specific like frequencies or patterns or like contrasts. Mm -hmm. So it could be something like that. Like I, I don't have I don't suffer from it either. Um, so it's never to negate, you know, anyone who, you know, just has actually had an episode because of it yeah. like you know it, whatever is going to set that off is going to set that off um and i couldn't help but wonder if there are some settings in the in the ui or the interface even that can be set to to like make that less less arduous i'm not sure but 
whatever it is, uh, I, I mean, I would caution people if you yourself suffer from that, be careful. Um, and it's one of those things where, I mean, I'm sure that they are doing their own research and I hope that they kind of, you know, turn something up and figure out what to do. And yeah. if, if at the very least, you know, have some sort of setting that would allow players just in game to like disable that kind mm -hmm. of effect if they need. Um, but I mean, we'll see. I, I haven't heard huge widespread reports of it. I've, it seemed to be right. like a concentrated kind of thing, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just something to be aware of. With yeah, this one. You know. There are things that that have been done to media to to help with that. You know, I had seizures as a child, but they were not epileptic in nature. Um, but you know, like the episode of Pokemon that everyone knows about with with Pikachu, a full yeah. gamma, you know, like lowering of the whole scene can help as well, just because the contrast isn't as high. So that's something that they could look into doing. Um, but yeah, it might be just that the effect that is is the problem. Like remember um, them talking about Tesseline and pushing the tears out of her face. Maybe it's one of those weird mechanic, you know, these weird VFX that they had to layer together. And they're just like, how do we even take it apart now? Uh, but to I not mean, say something, very possible. that's a little weird, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, just, just say like, okay, it's one of, it's okay, we're going to work on it. But maybe again, it hasn't gotten to them. It isn't super widespread. So all we can do is keep talking about it and then, and they'll yeah. do something. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, overall, near raid was kind of mixed bag for me. Yeah. But I have enjoyed running the raid itself. Mm -hmm. So. I yeah. I was a little thankful that I was able to get an, like any drop from my first mm -hmm. run because it's just I don't want to have to keep like I'm already gonna now that we're we're with the third one here I'm gonna have to mm -hmm. run each of them right to get the tokens to upgrade gear. So it's just like I don't want to have to do these more than i have to mm -hmm. do you not have any saved from when you ran them before uh i had two from the, the second one but i actually didn't have any from copied factory so i'm having oh. a, yeah mm -hmm. i i don't know how that happened but yeah so <laughs> so there you go yeah um I let's move on do you, guys, do you guys have like a favorite mechanic from the entire near collaboration or from this latest one just the latest one the latest one is that that mechanic in the last the last boss fight where you have to look down Sure. Yeah. The building. Yeah. Verticality. Yeah, I thought that was really mm -hmm. cool. I, there's also a little Easter egg on there, too, if you look, which is, uh, I thought that was cool. Yeah. Ah, oh, somebody pointed out another Easter egg to me last night. You know that series of paths that has the dead end? Or a couple of dead ends. Everybody's going, why? Why are these here? If you open up your map, that shape says 14, 1, 4. That's funny. I think somebody, I don't actually know if this is true. I cannot confirm this. What? But I think somebody in one of our runs ran down one of those dead ends too and a red girl like appeared at the end of Ooh. one that's awesome i'm yeah. not 100 percent. i have not witnessed this myself okay. that but cool. that's probably that's probably a sometimes thing because on my very first run people ran to the end of all of them and there was no red girl yeah. mm. Mm. i'm curious i have to double check it i mean i'll try and see if i can verify mm -hmm. it but it's that seemed like a cool thing as well to maybe put something yeah. in there um, a favorite mechanic. This is actually hard for me to think about. Yeah. I mean, the black and white might be it, mm. but from a weird, this is like, this is such a weird personal thing. Like the black and white mechanic from like a technical standpoint, I think is the most interesting to me. I really like how they did that and the way that right. you have to kind of like move your things and drop them and do all the stuff. I liked that a lot. Um, but from a more thematic element, I liked the trains. Yes. Yeah. And yep. like, okay. I don't think anyone else likes that. <laughs> Maybe you two do. But I like, do. I, there's something to me, and I think this is just, again, it's thematic. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. anything, right? Trains are used a lot of times in media as a symbol of coming and going, of transience. If you think mm -hmm. about um, Spirited Away and the whole scene where she's leaving the inn and she and No Face are on this train and it's like the vast ocean and it there's this sense of like, travel and impermanence and what it means to all be passengers and what happens when you reach the end of the line and it's a bigger metaphor for life and all this other stuff right so for me those trains and like the sounds of the trains and when it pulls up and like the red girls step off of it and then it's just these like empty doorways and the, the tracks that like are or aren't running and like that combined with the cityscape that you see in the right. distance that's like this phantasmal thing and 
and the song that's just so mournful like there was something about that that just like really got me i don't I, i'm actually like tearing up a little bit that's about that's, that's deep <laughs> yeah i mean it's like it's it's that fight uh, just because of the the themes of near about humanity and them being gone and the things that are left behind and then them using it to beat our asses with um you know it's just it's just one of those things um it reminds yeah. me of i think it's bravely default actually i'm not entirely sure there's a i think it's bravely default in which there's a summoner and they summon things oh. and you're like what is this thing it's a it's an airplane but it looks like a monster and it's because it's like summoning it from the future and it's like what you're summoning an airplane to hit me with like it's it's this weird like out of time type of thing which is interesting to me like the mechanic mm -hmm. itself it's like don't stand on them or whatever it's red green there's there's, there's so <laughs> yeah. much more that they could have yeah. done to explain some of this yeah. and it's just like you're I, just like i have no idea what's going right. on See, Fusion, and that's what makes me so mad. And, like, I see Ivory in the chat who's like, I thought the trains were well done, but it made no sense to me in the world of 14. Yeah. And yet, and yet, Ghost Train is one we of the most trains. iconic. Yeah. We have trains. Um, uh. But here, like, this is the weird discrepancy, right? It's, it's just like you said, Fusion. It feels so disconnected yes. from every other piece of imagery, every other, you know, narrative theme that we have. And yet, I think that last fight is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went even further. In, I'm, I'm such a huge nerd. I'm so sorry, everybody. I went even further. <laughs> That's why you're here, man. Like, <laughs> because, like, the music themes that tie into this as well, right? This boss whose entire theme is music. Music, a lot mm -hmm. of times in and of itself, is also used as a landscape that talks about transcending the things that make that separate us in a sense mm -hmm. right like music is a universal language you hear heard all the time it's something that no matter who you are where you're from your emotions connect to it in a sense and that we can all meet in a place that transcends just technical language time space within the emotion scape of music which again for this final fight is incredible the idea that these worlds that have these commonalities but are so drastically different could meet in a space and understand one another and then have this beautiful fight that's like all set to this backdrop i love these details i hate the way that they use <laughs> them i think they did a terrible job and i think that most players probably won't read into it and rightfully so because there's nothing else that reinforces these themes again, mm -hmm. right? Like people in chat were saying earlier that they liked the dwarf stories and that yeah. they thought like the story with the dwarves in and of itself, the idea of a community that ostracizes you or judges you was a good one. But again, it's like, why then is the culmination of this whole raid, this fight about like transcending time and space with a universal understanding of the fleeting nature of life <laughs> And like, Thanks, it's, your like, it's like that is an incredible concept like the idea of what a perfect eden is is also something that we've seen mm -hmm. in in like the eden raids so why didn't they take those strands of thematic narrative and then give us a story that reflected it like yeah i'm so done with this raid. <laughs> <laughs> wow like I... <sighs> this is a this is a what's your favorite mechanic answer by the yeah. way. <laughs> <sighs> but like yeah. the thing is, is that the mechanics for me in the near raids told the story that was there, and the story did nothing. Yeah, nothing. and like that's the point for me. Like that final fight, if you break those mechanics down, and I encourage people to, like every one of them has some kind of meaning to it. And I love it because that is very Yoko Taro. And I also love, Aldino, that you're like, let's take these huge deep themes and then turn them into a weapon and smack us with it because that's yeah. also very Yoko Taro. It really is. Like, but it's, it's, you know, I think they're tied together because mm -hmm. in order to get that, I think you needed to have a story that set you up to get it. Right. Does that make sense? It, it's kind of like, and you know, we're going to talk about it in a little bit and I can't wait to talk about Verlet. Um, but it's kind of like that. When you do the first part of it, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. The color-coded children 
it's whatever. It's kind of a Gundam crib. And as you go on, they keep layering things to make it much, much better. And they could have done it with this. They could have easily done it with this. They just did it with Diamond. You know what I mean? The conclusion, we'll talk about it. Ish. Yeah, ish. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's, I can, you know, if you're passionate about Nier, uh, it just lets you down. Maybe. So what's your favorite mechanic, Charles? Uh, Absolute favorite, probably still the transparent floor, because I did not expect it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do like the uh, stupid uh, black and white rings around you. Um, yes. And then having to do that. Just because it's one of those things where you have to think a different way. It keeps yeah. changing the way you have to think about it, which I like. Yeah. So I have three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Three favorites. All I'm doing of it. them. I don't care. Yeah, I know. The, the one Charles just said uh, was my favorite visually. Yeah. Um, My favorite one that screwed with alliances was the yeah. one where you have the tiny red girls that spin. Because people are like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I hated I'm not going to be able to keep track of all of these. It's so easy. You pick yeah. one. You stand behind her. And they're all spaced out so that none of the rest of them are going to hit yep. you. Exactly. It's- so easy. It looks I, I figured that out too, but I still don't like it. it. Yeah. That's fair. And the, the second version of it where they have them where they chain the red girls and just move them across the mm-hmm. arena. That one's easy too. There's one red girl who's not chained. You stand behind her. Mm-hmm. They'll get hit. And they're actually really easy to avoid also. Yeah. But my actual If you couldn't favorite... tell, Zanidra has uh, already finished doing the guide write-up for... Yeah. It's a line. <laughs> okay, so my actual favorite, and it's for a really, really dumb reason. Um... The Gretel, Gretel and Hansel, um, with the shield thing. Mm-hmm. I saw a tank do this yesterday, and I was like, "You're so smart." The one you're fighting, the one with the lance, and there's there's like a white mage ass eyes. There's um, dancer dances. At, the AOE is big. You use it. You hit the other guy, and you take a hit accidentally if you're not paying attention to your position. However. If the other tank turns the shield guy around so that it's facing the alliance, that front side is open and you will not hit the shield. Yeah, that's right. It's just yep. such a small, clever detail that I saw this tank do and I was just like, you mm-hmm. are so good. You're so smart. It's just such a small thing. <laughs> so it's pro strats. But I love it. Yeah, pro strats. I love it. It just it it's one of those things that made made me get the brain tingles. I was like, you, you. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's not even really a mechanic so much as mm-hmm. like a avoiding a mechanic. A pro tip for tanks, honestly. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, and that that's that is actually I hadn't even noticed that to be honest. Yeah. I didn't even realize that there was an opening on that side, and that's like another subversion, right? Like mm-hmm. if you always face a tank or t- an enemy away from the party as a tank. And then to have some kind of mechanic where, yes, in this one situation, if you face them towards, it actually has some sort of benefit to your party. Mm-hmm. It also worked out <laughs> on a different run that I did. Um, one tank was not paying attention. And then one tank died. So then the leftover tank who was paying attention had both bosses. And everybody's freaking out, standing behind. Move them, move them, get the thing. And it's like, just stand in front. They're both, because both, when they're next to each other, they tether and they both get the shield. But they were on top of each other, shielded, just stand with the tank. Keep mm-hmm. DPS. <laughs> Either way. I, I I like that teeny detail. It's neat. Mm-hmm. That's a good catch. All right. Uh, so uh, moving over to uh, Sorrow of Whirlit. Yes. Uh, I love this. It's so this good. so good. It, this is what I wanted from it. Um, mm-hmm. it's narratively. I think the fight itself. Yeah. Um, eh. Yeah, like the, the the platforms were cool. The uh, it it's it's hard, right? Because it's it's like it really didn't follow the necessarily the same kind of flow as the other ones in mm-hmm. a way. But like, if it did, then I might still complain. So I don't right. know. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna right. go ahead and like say, in my opinion, that the fights themselves don't have a flow because one of them was a trial well, by itself. Sure. Well, in in terms of things like beats that you expect the fight to hit like it, it kind of hit it but right in, yeah a little bit vague, vague cast right yeah. welcome to the the struggle ladies and gentlemen um yeah it, it wasn't as crazy as as some of the other fights 
Yeah. Uh, though, though I guess we, we hadn't really seen that really since the first one anyway. Mm. But, um, yeah, like, the fight was okay. It was, you know, uh, it was it was fine. Um, the story was, was really great. Um, it definitely... I, I didn't leave disappointed. I'll mm-hmm. say, uh, I, I think I, I was, I definitely got emotional uh, mm. with I with this. It yet. Oh, yeah. oh, you are I in for a treat. I haven't yeah. done it at all. It's the only piece of content from the whole thing oh, that I haven't no. done yet because I've been wanting to set aside time to like record the whole right. thing. <sighs> yeah, grab and grab some Kleenex. So I know. Yeah. I'm so, I'm excited because it does seem like what I've heard from everybody people were like, I was really surprised by how much this got me, even mm-hmm. if they had been enjoying yeah. the quest. And I was like, right. good, hurt me, Final Fantasy. Do yep. it. <laughs> I just got through the fight and was like, okay, I have to go back into the 24, man. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was really good. I can't wait to scream about all of the Gundam references. Oh my goodness. Like, that <laughs> that's not a spoiler. Like, this whole thing has, but my goodness. So <laughs> there's, I'll know, Gun- there's Gundam references in a quest yeah. line about robots? What? <laughs> Aldino, I have a question for you. Yeah. So I had my big nerd out about like, you know, the themes of Mm. Nier and how it didn't totally connect and stuff. I am curious about what your nerd out is in the version of this was actually good. Uh, (laughs) And how do you feel they represented a lot of the Gundam stuff? What do you think was like really a highlight, how they built on it? You know, I got to wait for the spoiler cast for most of it. But for the first one, the first thing, quickly is just uh gundam the motto may as well be war as hell right that's that's it right it's not it's not glory it sucks people die instantly for no reason in many of these shows like you're like oh yeah there's this guy he's doing something he just got smacked well he's like a kid he's not gonna end and he died right and you're like oh this person's family is here and they're dead right it's just because war is not good it's not good. You shouldn't glorify it. And we have Gaius and Valens who glorify war. We have the instruments of that in the children. We have the weapons, you know. And the way that it sussed out at the end is the only way it ever ends. Mm-hmm. The only way it can. I, I was very happy that the children yeah. were not as dumb as they had been. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That does help too. It, see, but. see, for people that have done this already, and people that have listened to to some qualms we've had with the, the some of the other stuff, they you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you get to mm-hmm. it. They 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 actually did did what they should have done the entire yeah. time. It's a it's a good way to end it, and I can't go into exactly why, but yeah. once you see it, you'll know exactly why. I think everyone knows there's a particular point at the very end that everyone's going to be talking about. So do it as soon as you can. Just because it's it's a little it's a little uh, impactful. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm nervous, yeah. but I'm I'm really really happy to hear it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. I think it that is... was that was my favorite piece of content, definitely for this patch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah I think I have to. I mean MSQ in the dungeon I loved as well. MSQ was good, yeah. but I think Whirl it yeah it I gave me, so. it gave me feels, and so mm-hmm. therefore. Yeah, I'm gonna say it as vaguely as possible because yeah. I want everybody to experience this part of the dungeon first time for yourself. Oh, yeah, it's so great. Mm. But the part right before the last couple of pulls, mm-hmm. yeah, so beautiful, so great. It's yeah. so cool, <laughs> and it's, it's not even like a big amazing thing. It's just no. kind of like what a neat little thing. Yeah, little interlude, and, it, and it's or so something. weird, right? Because you think like, oh, okay, it's like this. You were going into like this this old sandy, stinky yeah. Amul Jaw camp or whatever, but it's actually there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Yeah. So, I guess. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say on, if we are, are we transitioning into the dungeon now, using Zen smooth transition in, or is there more about Verlite? I th- I think, I we, think can... we can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think so. May as well. Um, I mean, I'm sure with especially Verly, we're going to have a lot to say on the oh, spoiler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, it's fine. That's probably, I think, where a lot of that is going to be. Because mm-hmm. the story itself seems like it's really where everything just, like, comes full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the dungeon, yeah, yeah. I, I kept saying while I was running it, Zen, I was like, where is the thing that is going to make this iconic to me? Yeah. And that was the moment that mm-hmm. you're talking about. Because uh, you're right. Like, the rest of it is pretty standard. And yeah. 
I really, really liked the dungeon. I thought the music was really beautiful. I love the integration of, um, you know, the various characters and the way that it kind of mm -hmm. comes together. I think that was really strong too. The first, the two bosses, mm. I could, t I could take them or leave them. I, yeah, I, there they're fine. Mechanics, but they're, but yeah, they were fine. They were neat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're fine. Oh, I didn't yeah. feel like they did anything to build the story. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's true. They were They're fine. Kind of were, you gonna, were you gonna say oh, something else? Oh, I I'm just gonna say, just as the entire instance, just about, especially the second boss, being being someone with a lot of AoE, <laughs> it's fun. I did it with trust. <laughs> I did it with trust, and I'm like, this is gonna take forever. And I'm like, oh wait, no, I'm a summoner and it's AoE. Oh no, this is instant. Um, so that's that's fun having that 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 dynasty warriors, that Muso feeling in the middle of a giant battle is kind of cool. Uh, we didn't really get that with Alamigo, I don't think. We didn't get it with the the Gimlet no. Dark, really. I mean, everything was going on around us, but in this one, we really feel like we are the the landing force. The we're breaking through the line. That really would like have that. made Gimlet so much better. If I know, they just right? Added like ten more mobs into a pole that like you know, yeah, down their HP by like oh. two thirds or something. We figured it out. You can do the entire beginning of the dungeon up to the first boss in one pole. Of the can. new one? Yeah. Of the new one? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. some it the, looks like you can. Some you of can. The tuning, some of the tuning with the enemies. Yeah. Like, actually, okay. So, Aldino, you know, I actually love what you said because I do think that that second boss is mm -hmm. innovative. And I like the idea of, yeah, maybe like setting up a fight that does value something like spatial perception yeah. and AoE damage because yeah. there are certain classes that really excel at AoE. And so, having a fight where you feel like that kind of niche really shines i think is mm -hmm. great um and then you have that little like single target kind of moment yeah. but the fact that a lot of it is kind of aoe is actually really neat and i and i do actually like that i hadn't really thought about it in that level of detail so that's really cool um the other like tuning yeah i yeah i think they could have made the mobs a little harder i i didn't feel super 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 excited as a as a healer because i usually like those runs where you get like that new x and you're like butt clench mm -hmm. oh my god health is plummeting um, we, and even like with not knowing the mechanics, we didn't wipe nearly as much as we even did on, uh, oh, Necromancer race around oh. the first Heroes, Heroes Gauntlet. Heroes yeah. Gauntlet. Um, Heroes of the Storm? That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> like, even Heroes Gauntlet, I think I saw more full party wipes than I have, mm. you know, at all with this new one. Um, all of that said, that's really my like only critique yeah. of the dungeon, you know, like, Yes, for my personal taste, maybe I would have liked it to be a little bit harder, and maybe I would have liked those first two bosses to have something more relevant to, like, the story or the forces that were there or, like, mm. something, you know? I, I I think I would have liked that, but otherwise, I thought it was really fun. I thought it was a super cool journey. The music, the atmosphere, the final fight, all of it, the culmination is really good. Like, mm -hmm. that's a good dungeon. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm hmm I, uh, I, I we we got to talk about it on the spoiler cast, but the the final boss. I just wanted to talk about is that a subversion of expectations that it ends the way that it does? Because you know that final boss is kind of a big deal, right? I I had the kind feeling of. that I didn't I didn't want I didn't want that final boss to be around next expansion. I didn't at all, right? So I'm kind of happy that it happened that way. But I can I can. Some people might be like, okay. Well, I yeah, guess no, I'm that. I'm on the okay team. Yeah. I was like, that this yeah, this here? That's it. This here. Right. Okay. Right. And it's just it, with the rest of the MSQ and some revelations we got about some things, it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense why that last boss isn't as powerful as you might think they might be, right? Yeah, I, I was not expecting them to put Zodiac at the end of this dungeon. Right, exactly. Um, We're done just, now. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding it's a joke we just you know there was a duty action tickle all he just needed a friend you just need to tickle zodiac and that's it yeah that's how you, that's how you win uh, final fantasy 14 to put it as vaguely as possible I'm sorry it's a it's a mechanic we've seen yeah. from this type of mob before where you have yep. to stand together and that tickled yeah it was not it was not much at all nope. 
I was surprised that, um, and this was actually something that I liked, that weakness or vuln stacks really do make yeah. it a little spicy for people to survive in that Yeah, one. it's true. It's true. Which, which I was like, oh, nice, cool, sweet. Like, a little bit of incentive not to get your DPS uptime markers. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, so I did like that. But otherwise, yeah, I would totally agree. It's, it's absolutely a subversion of expectations. And I think that it is, like, setting the stakes or, or reevaluating the stakes, mm -hmm. in a sense, if that makes if that comes together i think so too um and that like the thing we previously thought was the greatest threat may not be mm -hmm. and like this is something that's been a shadow that we've been under for a long time and so like this idea Would that there is something it brought a shadow it was a shadow bringer <laughs> yeah it was, like a shadow bringer <laughs> um so like the actual threat we assume is still to come and that kind of ties into i guess my like analysis of the msq or like oh, vague yeah my vague statement of the MSQ in that, like, I really love a lot of the moments we got. I thought there were some incredible character, oh. like, culminations oh, yeah. of different mm -hmm. characters all coming together. Um, but I also felt like I thought things were really going to start getting wild in this patch. Right. And they didn't. And so I think that's why Verleet kind of takes it. I think that's yeah. too why, like, even the last patch for me, Verleet was above the MSQ for me because the action there felt much more dynamic and I'm still waiting for like the other shoe to drop with yeah. like what's coming it's it's that like we're okay we're going to we're going to build this up a yeah. little bit <laughs> and then we're going to build it up a little more <laughs> and then maybe maybe part 2 we'll just go okay we're there <laughs> yeah <laughs> to the moon yeah i hope so because all of the different pieces coming together i think is really satisfying mm -hmm. like oh and you all know i'm a sucker for dragons and like this one had so much that I felt so much about, like, like particularly yeah. with, I mean, we know Tiamat is in the patch because yes. we've seen her in the trailers, mm -hmm. like, um, yeah. but everything with Tiamat, I was like, mm -hmm. this is incredible. Like, I yeah. loved it. There I, was the the part, no. and it, it had it in the trailer where you see Astinian looking at Tiamat. Mm -hmm. I spent, like, 30 minutes in G-Pose next to Astinian looking at Tiamat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't blame <laughs> you. I don't blame Did you. Like, you put on the appropriate dragoon armor. I well, I, I switched over to dragoon. My dragoon is currently glamored with the uh, the Shadowbringers gear that you got at the end okay. of 4.0. Yeah. Or yeah, 4.0. That makes 4. Sense. X. Yeah. 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 See, I'm I'm gonna and, and this is this is a tease for the the spoiler cast. I am more behind a summoner rework than I've ever been before for one specific reason, and it's gonna make a lot of people mad. But I think, I am just going to say, I think that uh, that it is deserved after this little bit of the story here. This this kind of resolving of things around Tiamat that I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to not not do that anymore, if you get what I'm saying. Right? I uh, do. Yeah. yeah. I would love it. I would absolutely love if they were that bold to do that. But mm. we'll see. That would be cool. I mean, I hope, I hope. Yeah. I hope we get a rework for sure. Well, I mean, I don't even... It, that, like, not even... Yeah. But yeah, like, thematically, yes. yes. That would definitely That'd be, be so cool. appropriate, right? Um, yeah, there's just so much good stuff, and I feel like we have a very strong confirmation, perhaps, of mm -hmm. a place that we're going to be going to. There are um, a lot of very strong location threads that they yes. drop during this patch, mm -hmm. and it really makes me wonder... I mean, and we talked about this... When we talked about Void Quest, right? The the fact that 6.0, that's done with 6.0. 6.1 is something new. There's so many options. <laughs> right. Like, what what of these hints are going to be part of Endwalker? And what's going to be the, the new arc? I it almost, you know, it, it makes me wonder if they have multiple arcs already planned. Right. Or uh, it's just there's, there's so many things that they're like, hey, remember this thing? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still a thing. Don't you forget about it. It's relevant again. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, and that was exciting to see. Go ahead, Zed. I was just going to say, I just like the fact that, that they spoke about Maricidia at all. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm a fan of going there one day. Yeah. There's so there's much. A massive, yeah, there's a massive amount of history in the game that's just buried on this continent. We may never see, and I would love to go there. Yeah. I, you know, if we if we stop the end of the star then it really behooves us to explore the rest of it at some point, right? <laughs> I mean, like, 
we saved it. Why not? We, we, I, I know the void is there, but we kind of got to explore this completely. And there's a few places that we haven't been. We, so. we we have some downtime while they analyze yeah. the the pig's findings. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> okay. that reminds. Me. Oh, no, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. I think we're gonna say the same thing because I just want to know, and it's gonna be in the spoiler cast. Just there's a particular moment in which a pig is involved, and it's and it's 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 got it's a big moment in which a lot of things you know change there. Um, but the pig did it did it take you out of there? Fusion just at all? <sighs> a little bit. Okay. See, I thought it's it little... might. Right. A little bit. I just from from the perspective of of people involved. Can you just imagine? Yes. Oh like, my goodness! Yeah. So sorry that this, that, yeah, that pig's yeah. gonna do what? What now? That pig. Yeah, that pig. Right? What? Yeah. 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 I wish they had done something almost more like the anima spirit or yeah. just like some something that wasn't the pig. It's. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I think I have accepted the pig and yeah. I was so into the moment for so many other reasons surrounding yeah. the pig that I was like, whatever, the pig doesn't even matter. <laughs> the, the pig has but, been around long enough that we can kind of just tune it out and be like, yeah. all right, whatever. It's fine. But I will, I will make a note that I think even they tuned the pig out because at the peak <laughs> of that moment, the pig gets swallowed by light. And I was like, even you don't like this pig up in this yeah. frame. So why'd you make it a pig? I, like <laughs> the next time, the next time, like, I we can do an in-person interview with with Yoshida-san or Koji. I just want to look him dead in the eye and be like, "Why porksies? <laughs> you have all these things that you can draw on. You don't even need uh, anything to to have there, but you decided." It could have been a Moogle. A pig Come on. with wings. You know, it's funny because I think I actually would have almost accepted Moogles more. Yeah. And, and it's like, this is totally arbitrary, right? Can we really critique oh, that yeah. a flying pig versus a small bear thing with a pom-pom on its head <laughs> would somehow be more appropriate in our fantasy, whimsical fantasy game? Like, no, we can't. And I know that it's completely nonsensical. Yeah. I know that it's completely Things stupid. Things that video games but, make you say. <laughs> yep. But it's one of those things where it, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't really think about it much until mm -hmm. we had Ethies on the cast, and Ethies hates them. Yeah. And then that has just been in the back of my mind ever right. since then. And every single time I see one of them, more and more, I'm like, this really does suck. <laughs> 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 like, it's, again, it's fine, because I can accept it, and I can just roll with what it. A, like, whatever. But it is. It could have been, like, yeah, been a robot, dude. It just feels really awkward in these like very dramatic moments and these moments of strife and warfare and like people whose souls have been corrupted. And then there's this <laughs> little dumb pig. And he's so cute. I love him. He's so cute. Right. I love piggies. But like, I just. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up. I just wanted to know. Could you imagine was going yeah, down go into like where all the kobolds are? And it's like, all right. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make everything better. We're gonna heal your temperament or your 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 temperament temperedness, yeah, yeah. whatever, Temper right? Demon. And you're like, okay, <laughs> like what do we gotta do? Hold on. <laughs> the fuck? What? That's your how you're family. gonna what? Yeah. Your whole I mean, family's been lost. As much as we years. all mm. as much as we all love Alize, it's kind of her fault. She yes. made yes. it a pig. She it's chose. Mm-hmm. And well, I I think that's also something that's weird to me because it seems very much like in the moment, you know, it was just a decision that she, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take us back in story, right? Because in the story, the, there's a whole scene where mm -hmm. her, her new Mo guide says to her, like, make it in a shape that speaks to you. And it feels like in that moment, they had to have known, they had to have known. I can't imagine that they wouldn't have that. Like they knew this, it would be important going forward. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's very weird to me that in this moment where she's supposed to make something that is hers, she just makes the porksy that all the new Mo use. And it felt like a reusing right. of asset as opposed to, mm. like, something that actually does directly reflect right. her person. She should have done a phoenix. It yeah. would have been important to her. Absolutely. And it would have been significant <laughs> for the fact that she's bringing people back. It should have been a phoenix. Yeah. It really oh. should have been. And with her, with her grandfather, exactly mm -hmm. important to her. 
as her grandmother and but, revitalizing people. But yeah. you have to remember one of the big things out of want... Coil was yes. we can never tell anybody about this. Yeah. But they don't it's want people thinking about phoenixes. But they're oh. back anyway. But think about it. Like, that would have also been a really cool way for her then to have kept her grandfather's memory alive mm -hmm. without having disclosed, like, to take that 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 imagery of Phoenix and make it something that continued what her grandfather's original purpose was before it was corrupted to yeah. save people. And so, what? like, even if she couldn't say what it was, mm -hmm. yeah. it still would have really... What if it was just the, like, little version? We have a little, like... Suzaku minion, the little ruby yeah. bird or whatever. I, you know, I would have been I, fine I, with it with the cute version of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I mean, Are I, you saying I, you I, would be fine with the Phoenix Eggy? Because I think uh, you know, summoners of Patches Pass would have said the same, but we got better than that now. So that's oh, okay. you know, and, and uh -oh. I think if you if you want to try and read into it too, I mean, you could go up, you know, with the fact that okay, something that speaks to you, she knows it's going to be a familiar. She mm -hmm. knows that the Numo also use porksies and that it works for them and whatever, as long as it works. Yeah. 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 yeah you know, it could be. It should have been a dumb, it should have been like a little dumb looking alpha note, just like forever. <laughs> that would have been well, hilarious. And that's yeah. why it's a porksy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think she says something in the moment, although I can't recall and I don't have her dialogue up in mm -hmm. front of me, but I think it's supposed to have something to do with like, she's bad at art. We know that, mm -hmm. but like, I thought it, I they had a do with pet. Like, they had a pet named Angelo, yeah, or something, like which is weird because then why wouldn't you make it in the form of said what Angelo was? Did did they say do something that's significant to you, or did they say hey make a porksy? They said do. It's very specific. I remember it, and if I'm wrong, somebody can call me out on it. But they okay. said do something that speaks to you because she asks right. should i make it the same as yours and they say no every familiar is like the something that's special mm -hmm. to you. make it your own way uh, ivory jazz band in the in the chat is saying they do mention porksy specifically hmm. oh they, they say fashion for me porksy. i'm gonna have to look this dialogue up i'm actually curious because i remember i remember yeah. playing through it and having a moment where i was like why is it just a porksy they i mean re thing that's important re to her. regardless the savior of all of this is a pig with wings. It doesn't matter who told who to make that. I that was what the that was what the narrative out. team was like. You know what? Yeah. I mean, it's fine. Again, again, like I feel like we. This is all just a matter of feeling, and it, it's yeah. Within the landscape of Final Fantasy, this is 100% appropriate. Oh, yeah. This happens all the time. We have cute little things that do important stuff all the mm -hmm. time. Like, it's not Could you imagine, the... instead of getting a, a, a shot for COVID vaccination, they make a pig breathe on you? <laughs> That's what, like... It'd be I mean, quicker. It's like, is whatever. It's yeah. fine. Um, and, you know, we know that Porksies have, like, the connection and imagery mm -hmm. to stirring the soul or or dreams or things like that so it, yeah. it's fine yeah. it's fine that's true. um all of that said that's really not the main for all the time no. we spent talking about that's not the main takeaway that i have from the from the <laughs> msq this time around um no i i absolutely adore how they used tiamat and Estinian and mm -hmm. fordola those three characters and again we'll get into actual details with spoiler cast right. but those three characters um, I thought had some really, really fantastic moments in the writing this time around, even mm -hmm. if they are difficult moments sometimes, even if their characters clash with others. I thought there were some very, very interesting discussions around that and with our boy Alfino and, and mm -hmm. what his There were some was. really good kind of peeks behind the, the brain curtain of, of yeah. some of these characters and, you know, how they think and how they operate. And it, it was especially Alfino. Yes. Yes. Um, it's it's be... nice to see them continuing that characterization. Yeah. We all yeah. uh, at the at the end of the main thing when they're all uh gathered in uh Mordona and we're like, wow, you can see some characterization, some solid characterization there. We didn't see it before, and you can see it's still going. So I'm yeah. really pleased with that. Because for a while the scions were very meh. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. you are I... the main character, you know, yeah. like it's that MMO syndrome. One. You're the gravy. Um yeah. I'm excited, and I'm going to put this as vaguely as possible. I'm not okay. going to say which Scion, but you guys are going to know. I enjoy, I'm ex super excited. One of the Scions is going to a place. Mm -hmm. Some stuff is going to happen You're at gonna that place. You're going to go to the store and get us some beer, and it's going to be <laughs> great. It's, mm -hmm. it's not going to be made of fish. Oof, yeah. Oof. Um, I, I yeah. can't wait. Like, again, it's one of those things, right, where they are 
they are really just we're getting 6.0 and then they're like okay yeah. here's like several balls of yarn which one do we want to roll out and go down like it's just mm -hmm. there's so many options and it's it's crazy yeah that um, one definitely definitely felt like a direct setup to the next yeah like yeah. what is going to happen it's, in the uh, who knows um, man I'm, like it's who knows but that one to me very much mm -hmm. felt like this is something mm -hmm. that we would want to see with. that I, I honestly want to see it in the last little bit of story and i want to see either whatever decision is made from going to a place mm -hmm. either that is like the end or like right before they tell us what that decision right. is or or yeah. you know with the with the way the workflow goes maybe that's where the the, the next arc kicks off right yeah it could be that yeah. way they use that's, those development hey, man, resources to make I'm really excited. that I want to see that. um I mean, because traditionally, right, without giving anything away, there there usually are like two hubs mm -hmm. with an expansion. So we know Rods at Han. Mm -hmm. What's the next one gonna be? And I think that's the the that location. We don't know for sure which one it'll be, but I think it was mentioned in this patch. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and Sakura brings a, up a good point in chat saying, I saw somebody talking about how the game tends to have a scion go to a place as a means to have our character follow them. Yeah, and like mm -hmm. set up some kind of precursor or pretense to like why we would go there and why people would accept us arriving. And like, mm -hmm. I really appreciate that... somebody in chat referring to that character as capital T, that capital C character. Yeah. That, awesome. that makes me a little curious now because the character that was going to go off has never really been MSQ material, but rather side content. And so. that's why I'm excited. Uh huh. I'm and excited to see more of that. Well, yes. Did... Yes. Like they did say that we would be here in these patches as well, really like encountering or like specifically one, but mm -hmm. like seeing some characters that were going to be more featured in mm -hmm. like the next expansion. Yeah. I agree with everybody in chat. I, I'm excited about that character yeah. getting a bit more of a feature because, I mean, I think we've seen that character get worked in in more and more important ways. And especially with the context of where we may be going, the things that have happened yes. in other places surrounding that character actually I think are going to have like a larger tie-in. I mean, and again, this is like what I think the MSQ really shown with, with this patch. Uh, because, like, we have these really fantastic threads. We have, like, um, I mean, just, this one's not a spoiler, really. Estinian's quest for vengeance. Tiamat's quest for vengeance and, and grief and loss. Uh, we have Fordola, who, you know, uh, tried conformity and, and carries anger and rage and this desire for, you know, retaliation against the world. All of these the things thing that, are that like, she said is so poignant. It is. Oh, it's so Just good. I love, I love that whole cutscene. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And like all of those characters coming together in a space that leads to growth for them mm -hmm. and change, which is fantastic. I loved it. And then to see these other characters and some of the things even, um, all I'm going to say is Heidelin and like some of the things that we... That's all, that's it. Heidelin question mark. Like, yeah. like that's not so much a spoiler as it is just a topic, I will yeah. say. Like a mm -hmm. a thought that we've mm -hmm. all had um coming into Heidelin and Zodiac here. Um, but like some of the things surrounding that and this possible new location, again, more threads with characters that we have and other content that has shown those things, even if it's side content, now coming together. And that's what you want to see for a finale. That's what you want to see for an X pack that is the ending of a 10 year mm -hmm. story. You want to see those threads being remembered, picked up on, and then woven together into one tapestry that really feels like the journey we took in 10 years of this game is coming together and paying off. And right. that's what got me most excited about MSQ this time around. Like, mm -hmm. I love seeing that. I, I will say that. Uh, you know, there's parts of the MSQ where, you know, you're traveling with the people that are in the trailers, right? And specifically, there's a part where it is your character and, and a couple of elves. And I'm just sitting there thinking, again, this patch is so, so it'll be different for everyone. But as an Elizen summoner, to be in the place that you are with the people that you are dealing with the problem that you were dealing with, to then set up the dungeon, right? To get to mm. the dungeon. Well, for one of us to get to the dungeon, which was very cool. But uh, 
like it just to me it, it hit me a little different because it's like i the character knows of the struggles here the character is from ishgard you know talking to these two different you know oh, other elizin and like it's just it's a different feeling at that point somebody's uh, yeah, reaction really to astinian yeah oh my god right exactly it's so good there were some very hilarious moments in this. Mm -hmm. There were some there actually were some fantastic, characters reactions. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic character reactions. Oh and my it's, god. It's oh, it was good. It was really good. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to be able to talk more about it next right. week. Um and yeah. I think is that is that it? The mm -hmm. only other thing that I have to say is Grahatia's shine little beautiful eye bubs. I love him so yeah. much. I would yeah. die for him. I would die for him. He's so precious and he's so pure. We must protect him. I he's love great him. in this patch, too. He is great. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that boy. Uh, all right. Um, next week is going to be our review episode. Uh, we will be dropping some spoilers. Uh, you know, that'll be two weeks out. So, Catch up. from the, so you can the hang patch. out with him. Yes. yes yeah please please be excited with us um our guest review for patch 5.5 is going to be our good friend josh mcgrath he uh leads up our reviews to him here at gamer escape so um you know it, it's it's crazy i used to introduce him at events as this is the one guy on our staff that doesn't play 14 mm -hmm. and then he started to play and then and he's caught up and now he's going to review a patch and be on the show with us so he's he's coming a long way mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so that's going to be yeah, next. It'll be it'll be nice too because he'll have like a very very fresh uh, mm -hmm. view on everything. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, the rest yeah. of us are like, oh yes, we're well, veterans. He's going to be like, nah, here's the new guy's idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think. Is there anything else uh, anybody wants to bring up here before we close this out? Thanks, so. It's so hard to do. And not say anything. So we should just close it, it out now. So we have next I next time. Can't period. believe Tataru was getting on a ship to go to the moon at the end of this patch. Mm. It was so crazy and unexpected. And I just love like, Tataru. I just mm -hmm. love that she shaved her head and did like yeah. a like a flame sort of thing on the side. I thought that was mm -hmm. really cool. I liked when that. When are we gonna get that hair stuff? <laughs> I would think if if Tataru shaved her head, it would be like coins. <laughs> oh yeah definitely Coins. definitely like treasure sure. trove yeah. <laughs> it could probably like peter in so it's like starts with coins and like peter's into flames mm -hmm. you know we'll work we'll work we'll workshop it with her and we'll figure right. it out and right. we'll see how it goes <laughs> um yeah i just hope that everybody enjoys this that everybody's getting excited and and working towards new content and mm -hmm. i know we obviously love getting to podcast and talk about it, but we always love hearing from everybody else too. And it's just so fun to feel this energy from the community right now, leading into Endwalker and yeah. FanFest. So Less than a month away already. It's crazy. Holy cow. You're right, Rick. This is some of the like most hype energy. Mm -hmm. is right at the end slash beginning span between expansions. It's like, mm -hmm. All right. So <laughs> that's going to do it here. Uh, if you want, you can email us, aetheritradiogamerscape.com. You can tweet at us at aetheritradio. You can also find us on Discord, discord.gg slash gamerescape. We have an Aetherite Radio channel on there where you can talk to us about the show. Uh, for the next week, we'll also have a Final Fantasy XIV spoilers channel as well. If you would like to talk about the, uh, the story, the quests, everything that's happened without ruining the experience for anybody else. Um, and, of course, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Gamer Escape as well. That's going to do it for us here this week. Next week, spoilers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Raining but from the sky. Drink. <laughs> don't drink them. <laughs> Unless not? it's the milkman. No, don't drink him either. Why would you, uh, why would you want I mean, to I'm drink talking about milkman? <laughs> why did you, why'd you have to make it weird? Oh, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna make it weirder next week. Drink Don't worry. the milk, Just man. Remember this. Remember this point right now. I would I'll rather make, not. I'm gonna make it weirder next as week. Soon as, you, as soon as you hit the 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 off button, I have some stuff to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is some artful and ominous foreshadowing that's happening right now. I'll do. Wow. It. All right, do that's gonna to do it. Life? We will see you here next week for our review show. Oh. Bye bye. Please don't. Please don't drink the milk, man. Don't do it. Sorry.